My Jesus. blood pressure, oh. Matt, is the highest I've ever been during it. This is. No, stop touching the veins. I think you're molding a little bit. The Xbox. Which one's the best? Which one's the worst? It's obviously this one. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at all the different Xbox I and figure out which one goes in F tier and which one goes in X tier. Were we really doing X tier? Why Silly did you immediately go to Chaotic Evil? We're trying to do a tier list. You immediately started out at Chaotic Evil. The first Xbox is... The original Xbox. Debuted in 2001 for a whopping $299. In today monies, that is... One Ford Focus? A 2001 Ford Focus, probably. <laughs> About the same but price. Look, I have a soft spot in my heart for the original Xbox. Sure. It just had so many little things about it that were amazing. A lot of games, you could load up your CDs onto the Xbox and then have that those tracks just be your soundtrack for the oh, game. Oh, yes, you're right. Yeah, I forgot And that about was a that. really cool feature. Yeah. For context, if you are not familiar, even though you're watching Xbox tier list, the original Xbox was essentially a moderately powerful gaming PC. And it had fairly powerful specs for its time. Certainly far better than something like the PS2 and the Dreamcast. It obviously launched the Xbox brand and mm -hmm. they quickly got a better controller. It really brought online gaming to the forefront. Mm -hmm. The main issue was there was not an enormous amount of games for, for the original Xbox. There were some exclusives that we look upon really fondly now, like Halo and Crimson Skies and that kind of stuff. I would lean toward this being A tier. A tier. I'm I'm fully in agreement with there. Moving on. What the Logitech the? No. G no. Cloud. No. no. No, I call shenanigans, skullduggery. I am no the biggest proponent of cloud gaming that you're going to find. You are. Okay? In fact, we did a video about this a couple weeks ago. I was so for this until they came out with the price tag. This is basically a Android-powered Nintendo Switch. It's not like <clears> a Steam Deck or an Ioneo where no. you can play things locally. You're not going to play AAA games. You can yeah. play Android games. Even then, like it's not going to be a super strong experience. It's designed really for cloud gaming, but also just buy a controller for your phone and a battery bank and save yourself $250. Like, can I, we just put this in F tier and move on? Because I'm going to get offended. I was so excited to try this guy out. And then when, so it, when they actually had the specs, I was so, offended. If this thing was 100 bucks or 100 bucks, bucks so I, yeah. would, I would tell everyone to buy it. Yeah. But yeah. for $300, hell no. Hell no. The Xbox One X. This is a $500 Xbox that far surpassed the original VCR model when it came to performance. Have you ever heard of a teraflop, my friend? Because this thing was packed with them. I want to make like uh, the Xbox One teraflopped. It didn't, But though. it didn't. This was at a time, so in the mid, you know, 2010s, where both Sony and Microsoft realized that they were going to have to ride this generation out for a long time. They did the mid-cycle refreshes. So Sony brought out the PS4 Pro mm -hmm. and Microsoft brought out the Xbox one X, both of which were essentially the same consoles, just with a much beefier graphics. So it went from like most games playing at 720p, maybe 900p, to actually being able to legitimately hit 4K and a lot of current gen titles of the time. The problem with the One X was that it came out, what, three, four years after the original Xbox One. It righted the ship because the Xbox One was a disaster when it came out, right? No cap, absolute disaster. And the One X was really them stepping out of it because the One X was clearly more powerful than the PS4 and more powerful than the PS4 Pro. It was a nice upgrade, but I couldn't give this an X tier. I would say the One X is A tier. A tier, I mean, like, I didn't play it, so I gotta concede. The Xbox 360 with the Xenon motherboards. Now, we have to be very specific. There were two versions of the Xbox 360. This is where I no. get to call you a nerd. This is an important nerd. distinction. Important distinction. Yes, there were core models and arcade models and elite models, blah, blah, blah. That didn't matter. What mattered was, did you get one of the launch 360s that self-destructed after 15 minutes? Or did you get one of the ones that they replaced under warranty that actually lasted? That's the real distinction. So the launch version of the Xbox 360 came out all the way back in 2005, a full year before the PS3 and the Wii. The problem with the launch version of the Xbox 360 was this little problem called the Red Ring of Death. Now, to give Microsoft some credit, they did take care of this. And pretty much all of these, they extended the warranty. They would replace it with the updated models that did not have the issues. That's the only reason reason that this escapes F tier in my opinion, but I think it's a strong D tier just because while it was a good console, it had such huge issues. I doubt that almost any of these launch 360s have survived until this point. Like there's almost no way. Like they all red ringed. There's just massive, massive issues. D, D, locking it in, D. D. Oh. All right. You gave it the D. <laughs> The 360 <laughs> with an updated motherboard, they added the HDMI port 
and it didn't die. So yeah, I give that a, I give that a B. The 360 was a great generation of games. You could get an HD DVD player for it. Shout uh, out to HD DVD. Yeah, HD DVD. I think this has got to be really high up the tier list because high up, very high up. So the the thing is, once you get past the red ringy Xboxes, right? This was the console to have in 2007, 2008, 2009, 2010. Like until the PS3 caught up at the very end of its life cycle. The 360 had the best performance, or maybe not the best interface, but it had the most features. I honestly think that this 360, it's bordering on X tier for me. This was such a terrific console. I could be persuaded down to A, I think. But dude, this 360 was so good. Once you got past the red rings. I was gonna put it B. Oh. Nah, I don't think I can put this in B. I feel like this has gotta be an A. Take off your nostalgia glasses for a second. It's really blurry now. Yeah, exactly. The Xbox One S, okay. Ah. Now this is a little bit of a trickier one, right? So this was the slim version of the Xbox VCR. I think it had a far nicer design. I still think the One S, you know what, six, seven, eight years on, looks terrific today. It looks great. And it was much less expensive, right? So price was better. I mean, it was a true slim console in every sense of the word. But as we've talked about with the Xbox One X, it didn't have any more power, right? The Xbox yeah. One was chronically underpowered the entire generation. Yeah, it looked better, but like, it wasn't really a big upgrade. It was more just a price. I mean, like, it was, it was like, it was more like a just a price cut. My only defense really of the One S for being a little bit higher up the tier list than I think we're about to land it is if you ignore the fact that the One X and the PS4 Pro existed. In a normal console life cycle, this would have been a really solid upgrade. I still don't think it deserves to be any higher than maybe like C tier. Uh, C is what actually yeah. C is what I would I would give it. But like the One S was a good console, and I think if you look at our tier list, C is like good, and then below C is bad, and above C is really good. All right. All I'm right. afraid what's next? What's, it's been a roller coaster. I I'm, thought I'm afraid what's next should be the title of my book. <laughs> the, the Xbox One Sad Edition. They're all digital. Can, should I tell the story? I don't know if I should tell the story. Tell the story. Okay, I'm gonna tell the story. What what's the worst <laughs> that could happen as we get canceled and sued? Okay. We have some terrific friends at Microsoft. Yeah, especially the ones on the who pay your, side. pay your salary. I'm gonna punch you in the face. They don't punch, okay. <laughs> But we have good friends. And so when it came to the Xbox One All Digital Edition, they let us take a look at it early. And I remember they were really excited and they showed it. And I looked at it, I was like, so you took the disk drive out. That's it? Basically yeah. all they did was they took an Xbox One S, removed the Ultra HD Blu-ray drive. It was $50 cheaper, which was a nice sort of thing. But ultimately the regular Xbox One S was usually on sale anyway. Look, this was in hindsight, very clearly a test for the Series S yeah. and shipping an all digital console. The problem was it was really tough to justify because today when you look at the Series S and the Series X, there's a $200 difference. There's a price difference, a size difference, like a D tier, man. D tier, yeah. yeah. It's not quite F. It was clear that this is just a prototype for shipping a discless console and it was not actually anything that was all that serious. And I mean, there's a reason it's called the sad edition. The mm. Xbox 360 Slim. So I hated this design. What? Really? Yeah. Why? The same reason I don't like the PS5 design. I'm not oh, like- Oh, just a style. The modern, like the super modern, yeah. like, I want it to be an art piece in my living room. The pros of the Xbox 360 Slim, which came out quite a while after the original 360, let's not forget. This had built-in Wi-Fi. It okay. was down to $300. You had HDMI. Like, basically, this was a proper Slim console to built in. All the things that you kind of expected. You know what's weighing me down for the entire, like, for all of the 360s that yeah. we're talking about is Xbox Live. In a time when online play for PlayStation was for completely free. Man, I'm gonna punch you in the face if you finish that sentence. Paying, paying 60 bucks a year for Xbox Live was a hard sell for a lot of people. When you're going through and saying like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna save up all my, all my couch pennies to go get a console, okay? Mm -hmm. Yep. I look at Xbox and I look at PlayStation and I say, well, I can, I can afford to go get this one, but then do I, can I also afford another $60 a year? No, I can't. So I'm gonna go get the PlayStation. Look at how ready he's getting. Look, watch. So if, I, I'm if, so if, I, if I poke him, it'll I'm just... so mad. Okay, 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 okay. I'm gonna take all of the bullshit <laughs> you just spewed and tear it down bit by bit. First of all, PSN was horrible. Xbox Live was a million times better. Yeah, you paid for it, but you actually could get into games. Also, everyone had a 360. It was not until the very end of the life cycle that the PS3 caught up with sales. The 360, in my opinion, was the more popular console, especially when you had like Connect and everything. Do you remember when PSN was down for like a month because it got hacked? Yeah. Like PSN was bad. I'm gonna make a radical I... decision, a, ra a radical decision. Because of your slander, this goes X tier. Uh, X tier, <laughs> X tier. <laughs> A at best. 
Fine, I'll give this A. Ha -ha! Give Ten oh. points to Matt. The Xbox prototype. <laughs> what? From the Bill Gates GDC 2000 keynote. Look, this is 100% when Microsoft got into building Xboxes, they wanted to make a splashy entrance. And while this clearly was never going to ship. Before, oh, it shipped. It well, shipped right to the top of the Sony sign in Tokyo. Take that, Sony ponies. This is X tier. I get it, I get it. This is it's X, -tier. X tier. It's literally Look, X, X tier. X gonna give it to you. <laughs> Let's take the mood down for a second. There's exactly one person in here My who needs to My blood pressure, Matt, is the highest I've been during it this is. Now stop touching. The veins. I think you're molding a little bit. I, <laughs> you're watching it happen in real life right now. We're gonna put this tier list back in order. Yeah. With the next Xbox. <laughs> <laughs> this thing sucked. <laughs> Uh, the 360E. This is my very first E3, 2013. The Xbox One was basically laughed at when they announced that it was $500 with Kinect. But then, because clearly they weren't done with the 360, they released the E. This was basically just the Xbox 360 Slim and a very slightly different kind of chassis. Uglier. This is D tier. It just wasn't good. It was just very much just like a cheap 360 that you could just sell at the end of life that they saved a few bucks on. D tier. The Xbox One launch with the Kinect and the always on required. The Xbox One with Kinect was actually not bad. I'm gonna just say that straight up. Now, yes, it was an ugly looking VCR. Yes, it did require Kinect. And yes, it was the right call for them to debundle that very shortly. You're really proving the point that we should put this in an F tier. 2013, I could tell, hey, Xbox, turn on my TV or whatever. I could play some Kinect games. No, it was not the greatest thing in the world. But I think to put this F at F tier is a little bit disingenuous. I think this at least belongs in D tier. What? Okay. All right, I'll give you D tier. I'll okay, give you D tier. D -tier. The Xbox One with no mandatory connect that came out seven months later. You know what? This is my X tier. I have a story. Cap. Because I'm a dumb, dumb, stupid head. I bought into the rumors that we were going to be able to install oh. Windows 10. So I bought one of these guys specifically for the purpose of potentially putting Windows on it so and editing on it. <laughs> and then I, when that never happened, I'm like, what am I going to do with this Xbox One that I don't really care about playing games on? But then this thing became the most powerhouse media center for one simple reason. The HDMI in. If you had like a cable box, you could hook your cable box in. Music on here was great. This was like my media center. Okay, the fact that you're trying to put this in X tier offends me greatly because it's obviously not X tier, but I feel like this has got to be C tier. C tier, I'll give, right? you, I'll give you C tier. The 360 Elite. How many more 360s do we have on this list? <laughs> Okay, okay, okay. So the elite model of the Xbox 360 came out in 2007. This was the 360 to get. The problem with the elite though, was that it wasn't really that different. I don't know where to put this though. Cause like it was so similar to the regular 360. It was kind of better. It was black, but like other than that, it wasn't really that big of a difference. I mean, it's an upgrade. So I gotta say B. You think it's B? Well, we, that's what we gave the yeah, regular one. Yeah, okay, okay, I, okay, I got like, I feel like we gotta at least give it a B. Okay, B it is. This the Xbox Series X. This is awkward. Is that? X tier. What? This is a good console. I think it's hard to judge because it's so early. It's only what, uh, maybe two years old at this point. I think it's good. Yeah. I, I don't think it's X tier though. I think it's an A tier. What, but what would make it, what would What would you need for it to be X tier? Cause like, I know that a lot of people keep saying like, oh, there's no game for Xbox. I just, I don't believe that narrative because I'm struggling to play all the games I want to play on this. With the introduction of Game Pass, Game Pass is not a Series X thing. It's on everything, which yeah. is what really makes a lot of those other consoles work for me this is like i like this like monolith design yeah this checks my boxes and i'm i'm i feel strong about x tier on this one my gut is a tier mostly because while the series x is great it's also not like spectacular like it's just a really good xbox it doesn't do anything that's really really outstanding and also because it's so early those yeah. load times but like it's just, uh, if you want to go with x I, i'll give it to you uh, x, x give yeah yeah okay. all, right. all right x go and give it to you <laughs> next up we have x cloud which is actually just Game Pass Ultimate. Yeah. You don't need an Xbox to get the most out of Xbox gaming. Is he about gaming. to put it next to you? I am going to give it a B. To me, the latency bothers me too much. Like, even under near and those situations. If which I'm is why hard, I'm not giving it a higher grade. But if I, no, but I'm saying, like, even as someone who is very close and near the ideal thing, I still don't think it's good enough. Now, for some games, it's fine. And if I am hardlined in, I will say it is an acceptable experience for most things to me c tier man like it's fine i don't know maybe you're just okay with because, the latency, well, but i just but again, i feel like it. the I'm games like, i play 
are single player games. Like after sure. maybe like 15 minutes of playing, you compensate for that latency. Gamers don't compromise, Matt. Yes, they do. When it comes to if you if you can't afford a console, this is a great compromise. Which is why it's a C tier. I don't think it's B tier. B tier is too high, man. I think it is the definition of okay and C tier. Fine, because because you gave me X tier, I'll give you C tier. We <laughs> compromise here. Compromised. The Xbox Series fridge. Why is this on this list? Because it's not a 360. There's so many. <laughs> We needed things that weren't Xbox 360s to pad out the We could just put fewer of the 360s on the list, no, too. No, we got to have all of them on here. Did you know that if you take out the trays, an Xbox Series X fits perfectly inside of it? The Series X fridge is neat. It's actually a reasonable price. Not a great fridge. It's not no. super useful. I mean, above anything, I have to give Microsoft props because everyone made fun of the Series X for being a fridge. Yeah. And they leaned into the joke and made a goddamn I, fridge. Like, that's cool. I don't see Sony making uh, PS5 routers. So, like, <laughs> look, if you're the butt of a joke, stick that butt out and run with it. So we'll just we'll just go ahead and put this one. You're not putting no 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 that does not X go X tier. No 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 that's D tier. When's the last time your Xbox Series X kept your drink cold? Next up we got the Xbox Series S. The Xbox Series S came out swinging and I think it I think it really surprised a lot of people. People don't give it the the credit and the respect it deserves. Well, I've noticed uh, one X oh sorry yeah Series Xs have landed in stores mostly. The Series S has been easily available. $300 is far cheaper than any other next-gen console. While yes, this does cut back on performance. So it really does target 1080p instead of 4K. Now the downsides of the Series S is that it comes with a pretty skimpy little 500 gig SSD. Which, which fills, fills up, up pretty very fast. Very quickly. And of course there's no disk drive, so you can't purchase physical games. But I would argue that for $300, those are well worth it. Especially if you just wanna have like Game Pass and play a couple games here and there. I know that this is gonna be a very controversial opinion. I know a lot of people are gonna disagree with me on this. I think it's a pretty strong A tier. I agree. I, I, I fully agree with you. I like I it's a great console. Like, I don't think people give it a shot because they think, oh, it's the weaker one. And while yes, it is the weaker one, but it still has the same CPU, the same speed of SSD. Series S is A tier. Yeah, it would be nice to be able to play your back compact games by just throwing the disc in. And yes, it would be nice to have a little bit of a bigger SSD. But $300 is a price point we're never going to see again for another console. Every new version of the Xbox and PS5 are going to be more and more expensive going forward. They did this one right. Yeah. We finally got it. The Xbox 360 Arcade. I can finally tell my story. Well, I was an assistant manager at Radio Shack. Radio Shack at one point sold consoles for a very short time because not a single person in all of America went to a Radio Shack to buy a console. So we had a, a mountain of these 360 arcades in the back room. Yeah. And I mean like we were actually using the boxes to sit, like sit down for our breaks. <laughs> That's how many we had not sold. We were selling these for like 40 something bucks. Like I like I kid you not like $48 <laughs> clearance just to get them wow. out of the store and people still weren't coming in and buying them. I think it was like $55 after tax or something like that. Obviously, I did not get an employee discount on this particular one, <laughs> but like, that's the only reason I had a 360. Yeah. But then I'm like, oh wait, the Wi-Fi adapter is more expensive than what I paid for the console. The arcade, for those who did not own every single Xbox 360, was essentially just a basic version of the 360 that did not come with any kind of hard drive. The thing is the 360 arcade was very much meant for simpler games, because you basically need a memory card. This was very much an old school school version of the console. I feel like this one is D at best. This is our final list. I don't know how I feel about it. I think I feel okay, right? <laughs> I cannot wait for the comments on this one. Let us know what your X tier is. Let us know what your F tier is. Hello and welcome oh, okay. whoa, to whoa, this whoa. is. Because I'm running the show today. I was in the middle of researching for some wonderful items off of GameStop when I decided, oh, this stuff isn't good enough for main channel. So why don't we make it this is all about it? Stop. Stop giving away my formula. Here's the thing though, Matt. I have a wide variety of items. Actually starting out with this lovely tote. Matt, how much do you think I paid for this lovely PlayStation branded tote from GameStop? $14.99. 49 cents. Boy! Oh, wait, wait, 49 cents? 49 cents. I have more. Cool, because I am taking these. I love a good tote. I got some gifts for you. This is the first item for this video. It's gonna set the mood. It's gonna set the tone. I just want you to appreciate the wonderment of GameStop and I just want to make sure that you're really in the mood. Oh, I don't know. Oh, no. Okay. There are two items in the box. Uh, uh. 
So I know that Kyle was unfortunately unable to be here due to a uh, yet another dirt bike accident. Oh wait, no, 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 no. You get Tom. No, no, you get. No, I'm supposed to be Grogu. Taku. What would you say if these were some of the most expensive items in this video? <laughs> Don't worry about it. It's fine. <laughs> oh. Who let me out of the house looking so fly? I actually am really happy that this actually matches my shirt. I didn't even mean to do that. Hey, Matt. I heard that you're a big fan of gaming. Is that true? Can you confirm? I Well, I don't compromise. So I think legally that makes me a gamer. What's your favorite platform? Um, well, I prefer marble, but uh, it's I will I will take a good granite. Let me ask you a different question, Matt. Are you a big fan of deals? Yeah. Of high quality gaming accessories. Well, boy oh boy, have I got the item for you in this PlayStation tote. I like to feel around. Ooh. Ooh. Just 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 experience Ooh. this high quality deal direct from GameStop. <laughs> Matt, are you confused? What's 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 the confusion? This. So what we have here is a connect. Not um, just any Kinect, an Xbox One Kinect. An Xbox One Kinect that uh, d does not fit in this bag. I had the idea for this that uh, every item was going to come out of a tote. Now I'm realizing how annoying it is because I only have three totes and a yeah. lot of items. So I have to re keep releasing. It's fine. Yeah. When I did this with a with a bucket, I managed to juggle those. I gave you buckets full of keyboards. Well, Matt, I got you something else. It's <laughs> equally as amazing. Is it a PlayStation Kinect? I'm having a similar hand feel right now. Whatever could you mean, Matt? Something that doesn't quite fit in a, a bag. Huh. A weird proprietary <laughs> cable. Whatever could this be? Oh, wait. It's a second <laughs> connect. I could tell you a whole story about how this is a part of an elaborate joke, but the reality is I accidentally added two to my cart. <laughs> but Matt, you haven't asked the best part. I asked you if you like deals. Well, how much do you think I paid for uh, two Xbox One Connects? Three fifty. Three hundred fifty dollars? No. Oh, wait, wait. Three dollars fifty cents? Yeah. They were nine ninety nine each. Nine ninety nine each? Such a good deal. I accidentally bought two. I'm so rich. I can accidentally buy multiple things and not even realize it. It's okay. It was under this budget. What? It's okay. I just need some more bells, and then um, well, we'll we'll be reloaded any moment now. So. Fun fact, we pay all of our employees exclusively in bugs. Bugs? Like B-U-G-S bugs? Yeah. When we negotiate salary here, I'll say, I'll give you 150 bugs a week. So Matt. Yeah. We've got some high quality accessories here. Wait, no but way to plug them into things. What about I don't something? Think there's a thing in there. There is actually. What's something I truly love? Just think, think, what's the list of items that Austin loves in life? Boss Coffee. True. F1. Also true. In that order. Just open the damn bag. It's not a familiar hand feel. We got... This is a charging and TV dock for a Nintendo Switch. First of all, this is GameStop branded, but this actually is the coolest dock I have ever seen for the Switch. Not only does it work oh. both wireless, it has... Oh! GameCube controller ports on the dock. This dock allows you to hook up your Switch. It has two GameCube controller ports. And on top of that, it has a little switch. It will either work with the HDMI turned on so you can actually route it out to your TV or you can flip it off and therefore just have it as a charging stand with USB. Around back, we've got in addition to our GameCube ports up front, a USB, we've got a USB-C as well as HDMI. So I guess the only downside here is that you do need to provide your own power cable. But for the low, low price of $40, you've got yourself a dock with GameCube controller ports built in that works not only with HDMI on your TV like a regular dock, but you can also use it portably. So you press this little button on the back and it switches between HDMI output and just uh, routing the power and the USB into your Switch. We we got Smash. I will win this. I'm better at Smash. No, than I'm you. so bad at Smash. I haven't played Smash in a long time. No, 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 no! Isn't it nice to play with the GameCube controllers portably though? Like actually, I don't think I've ever done this before. The Switch is not plugged in right now. So the Switch is entirely running on battery, which is powering our hub and our controllers. That's really neat. Oh. Well, anyway, this is great. Can you, will you not agree that this is a pretty cool item I found on GameStop? I feel like you cheated. This actually is really cool. This is probably the best Switch dock I've seen. And it's exclusive to GameStop, right? Like this is not like some other third party thing. Like this is an actual GameStop branded item. How about some more GameStop branded items? 
I thought you were supposed to not tell me what the things things it's are. It's games not branded. It could be anything. The hand feel uh, really loses it when it's just in a square box. We have GameStop branded touch control gaming earbuds that look like a transformer. <laughs> Shit these out. <laughs> these have been opened. Have they? This is the ca the bag that the cable would come in. Oh, this and was, the box is actually ripped too. This was like scrunched up in the box. So I bought all these items from GameStop.com. So it was all shipped to us. It does uh, say pre-owned guarantee. This definitely has been in someone's ear. What the f***? This was definitely purchased as a new item, and yet, yeah, you're right. It's been opened, and it does not come with the extra. No, like if you look, there's there's ear, there's ear juice on there. So you can see they have the lovely little GameStop branding on it. But if you look over on this side, we have not put these in our ears yet. There's definitely some um, ear remnants. Ear juice. That does not make me feel confident. Um, yeah. Also, these are. Oh, so ugly, dude. I will say I have determined that there is a problem with this box and that there's no damn seal on it. So someone could have easily just popped it open, stuck it all up in their ears, and then put it back. So evidently, it's not new. If you guys are asking us, why, why, why aren't you testing it? Because I don't want to have ear COVID. Uh, oh, oh my God. Oh my God. Worst things have been my ears, Matt. I don't get grossed out by a lot of stuff, but ear ears is one of them since matt's too scared to try the used earbuds i'm gonna listen to them right now okay. i'm currently listening to them at 100 volume and i would still say they're not that loud there's a uh customer service number that i'm considering calling i'm ready ready for the light show it's uh rgbing right now they sound okay they're not bad they're really very quiet like i had it at like 90 95 percent volume and that was about where i would normally listen whereas normally i have earbuds at like 40 50 percent they've got rgb and which you know means it's a really good brand right how much would you pay for them matt i'm curious brand new of course from gamestop we've seen like from from uh five below mm -hmm. we've seen from daiso we've seen from cvs yep and all of those were like 10 15 bucks and but this has a GameStop logo on because it. Because of Game Stonks, I'm gonna say these are $99. No, they're $55. 55, 55. That is still way more than you should be paying. $30 for these more. I'm personally like not a fan of RGB uh, um, headphones to begin with, because yeah. like I feel like headphones should be kind of like subtle and whatnot. Well, you know what else is subtle, Matt? Our next item. Ah. This next one, it's a twofer. I got two items. You got in this twofer? Bag. Now. Before we open this bag, I there's a little bit of a backstory here because when you see the item, you're gonna be like, oh, okay, cool, whatever. But it's not so much the item is how it was advertised. This was a random assortment of this item. So they just shipped me whatever. Again, right. they were random selection of what they had in the store. So go ahead. Open it up, my friends. Hey, oh. Uh. Oh God. So uh, we purchased oh, random Xbox One controllers. One of them okay. appears to be like a Power A, I believe. The other one, I have no idea. I did not open these beforehand, but we saw them in the bags and we're like, uh. I don't feel so good. <laughs> Isn't this like brand new $20? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> if it's not a first party controller, they just put it in a bin wait, wait, of wait, generic wait, wait. controllers. So this, no, this is a, they, they reused the bag. This is legitimately like, caked in some excrement well, of some kind. The fact that they're reusing the bag. Before I even open this up, look how gross this is. Oh, 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 look at the grime. Okay, we should yeah. actually open this bag. This one's like legitimately full like, of there's, like- There's Cheeto dust still caked onto the, the, the joystick. Owner was a smoker. Oh, oh, it's so much worse than I thought. Oh, it's like I stuffed my nose in an ashtray. This is a fucking ashtray, man. The whole studio smells like smoke right now. Ah, ah, don't do it to me. Don't do it to me. You you did this to me. I did do it. That's legitimately one of the top three most disgusting things I've ever seen on this is. When we first saw it, we saw the bags. Like, oh, ha, 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 funny, weird, random controllers. And immediately didn't look at it until we're on camera. No. Absolutely not. You might not be happy right now, and I feel slightly nauseous, but what if I could tell you that we can end this video on a bang? You need a little bit more action. You need a little bit more lights, and you need a little bit more sound. This would actually be helpful. Okay. 
All right, big, big, big box. Big box. GameStop branded stuff doesn't miss, apparently. Just already $50 for these. That ain't it, Chief. These are $23.48. That's still too much. Yeah. I would say that the branding for GameStop is uh, egregious. Okay, so I'm gonna fire up our laptop. We get, let's get some sea shanty going here. Are we ready to activate the RGB? Mm -hmm. What mode is this? Is anyone enjoying this? Well, you know what though? People are gonna enjoy the beautiful sound quality. Hello and welcome to This Is. Today we're gonna be looking at the most expensive. They're actually not that bad. It's not that bad. Yeah, it's not that bad. But hang on, let's, let's actually do this right. actually impresses me the most for, for $25 because the ones we looked at five below didn't have Bluetooth. I mean, they're not terrific sounding, but it's certainly way better than like laptop or monitor speakers. Like for this kind of budget, I'll actually kind of give them a pass. I, yeah, not I, that bad. I, can, I, I wouldn't just, pay 50 bucks for them, but I would pay 25. Just, oh, wait, 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 wait. No, I actually saw something. I saw something here. Yeah. Okay. I, I wait, wait. So here, here's why these are a little bit pricier. Every time you buy one of these things yeah. comes with five shares of games <laughs> of game stonks so you get five shares of this thing that i'm lying to you about matt you're wrong the whole thing is that we have to have a consensus on these oh yeah you're right matt i will begrudgingly agree with you we're gonna angrily agree with each other because there have been some dumb controllers that have been made throughout the years Duke, but there's also there's been some N64. absolute amazing controllers that have been th Dual made sense. throughout the year so what we're gonna do today is go through all the core console controllers and we are gonna put them in a nice little tier list starting with the first one over here we have the n64 oh man so no. if you had three hands this would have been <laughs> s tier but unfortunately for us mere mortals we only had two hands you hold it like this or like this no no you hold it like this left hand middle yep thumb on joystick yep right hand on the uh arrow buttons and a b button because of ergonomics i would say c i could be persuaded for c i lean toward d Wait, I, where you at? i'm gonna i'm gonna argue c because okay. this is this is our first one if we're gonna be that negative that early okay you know ooh, c ooh. tier let's go c tier What's the next one? DualShock, the original PS1 DualShock. I certainly have a fond attachment to it. It was a decent controller. Now, obviously it got a lot better with the addition of Rumble and the analog sticks. Cause I don't yes. believe the base model had Rumble. I think that was added with the DualShock. I want to say this is B tier. I, I could be persuaded for C, but I think even though this was not as good as its later version, Compared to something like, you know, like an SNES controller or Genesis controller, this was much more of the traditional modern shape of controller. They kept this design for, what, 15 years? I think yeah. it's for a reason. I, I'm going to say B. I'll give you B. The launch PS1 was just so plain. Because we got the, the analog stick one in the same generation, that's where I'm like, man. Well, we can talk about that when we talk about the DualShock 2. Yeah, let's do that. Joy-Cons? Oh boy. How do we rank Joy-Cons? Here's the thing that's going to get me canceled. I don't like the Joy-Cons. I agree with you, actually. I like I. It's too small. Drift has been an issue since day one. Yeah. I'm okay using it as single Joy-Con, kind of on the side. But even then, it's definitely a compromise. There is something to the fact that you can just snap them on; they charge automatically. Like it's a really clever design. I wish they were a little bit bigger. I'm gonna I lean toward B. B? I'm gonna lean toward B. Oh, absolutely not. Where are you at? I'm just floating between D and C. The tech inside is what's on the only thing that's protecting it to me yeah. from being an F. I think we've gone through double digits of Joy-Cons on the channel throughout the years. C at best. Okay, I can I'll compromise with you. All C. right. All right. Next up we have the Sega Dreamcast. Mm, the chunkiest of boys. The problem is half the audience has probably never even heard of a Dreamcast. They were probably not even born yet. It's too wide. It felt like you're holding like a like a Tupperware full yeah. of mom spaghetti. The combination of the memory card, which was also- The VMU is cool. But nothing cool. took advantage of it. It's cool though. I'm gonna say it, D. I'll give you D. Okay. But 
Yeah, I, not I, good. Not good. All right, what do we got up next? DualShock 4. Okay, I love the DualShock 4. For context, and I'm sure we're going to talk about some of the other PlayStation controllers, but this was the first true redesign of the PlayStation controller mm -hmm. since the PS1 came out in 1995. So when the PS4 came out, the DualShock 4 added a lot. I will say even to this day, I'm still not a huge fan of the sticks on the bottom. I like the Xbox approach of the I, offset I sticks. I agree. I agree. But it's totally fine. Had a rechargeable battery, something that a certain other wireless controller in 2022 could learn a thing or two from. I like the DualShock 4 a lot. Really the only thing that dings it, and it's not even fair, is just that the dual sense is so good that it kind of makes the DualShock 4 just seem like a half step. But for its time, it was a good control. I, I feel like we can't look at it that way though. Yeah. I feel like we have to look at these things somewhat in a vacuum like i would give this s tier i'm leaning toward it, a I, I will give it a okay. it's it's a great controller i just me personally i don't like the joysticks both being on the bottom it to me that feels weird and i know that's not Lots what of everyone feel weird matt but yeah. sometimes you just gotta suck it up and deal with it you know what you gotta suck up and deal with using this next controller which is the, the genesis yes this one was like great for fighting games this yeah like, was sure. almost like specifically for mortal Kombat and stuff i never like liked that. the d-pad on the genesis controller i might be in the minority it's mushy. There. i do like the actual buttons and the layout so if you're not gonna have sticks which obviously this was before 3d games are really uh, much of a thing having your right thumb be able to do the sweep of all six buttons on front was nice it was unlike a lot of the other co controllers of the time it was actually designed for human hands and not like four fingers or something i'm leaning toward b on this one. i'm going i'll give you a b all right it's b. pretty fair okay yeah b. I, 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 i'm looking at our tier list right now i'm feeling pretty good about it I, again i want to know what's gonna be s and i want to know what's I, gonna be I'm, f because i don't know yet i don't know i yet. know I've got a couple you know, of both. You, yeah, you know, since the day you were born. I get it. Next up, we have the Xbox 360. I'm going to put my cards right on the table. S tier, no doubt. This was and remains to be one of my favorite controllers of all time. The only reason that you could knock me off the S tier perch is the fact that this was a AA battery controller but 2005 i'm a little bit more okay with it compared to the newer I, this controller is so good it's a great controller little small for my taste i mean i guess compared to the xbox one of today i agree i like the feel of it but for yeah. its time this went up against the dual shock 3 i definitely picked this over the dual shock yeah. 3 there's a reason why this was not only the standard for console gaming but it was also the standard for pc gaming as well if you want to argue s i'll give it I, to you i i think it's a low s <sighs> I think it's S-A. Rock, paper, scissors. I'll go S, you go A. All right. One, two, paper, three. S tier. <laughs> yeah! S tier. Right, S -tier. <laughs> Next up, we have the Duke. The Duke. No. Another chunky boy for a chunky boy. It felt like you was you're holding a pizza. Like I've heard stories. That apparently, the engineers developed the actual, like, innards of the controller and then it was left to some poor product designer to figure out how to wrap the actual like shell around it and they're like oh here's what there's no way you can try to tell me that the duke is not f here i know that they did redo it was it maybe hyperkin or someone hyperkin re-released it unless you're shaquille o'neal you're probably not going to find this controller helpful maybe some people have some fond memories but man this is hard f for me i mean imagine throwing this thing at your little brother in the face you don't have a little brother anymore <laughs> You know what you do have still? And the S! Okay, so this is exactly what we were just talking about. This was the, I don't know if S stood for slim or super duper good or whatever, but this was the smaller, slimmed down version of the Duke. Still nowhere near the 360. I think the 360 was like where Xbox controllers got good and they've been good ever My since. My kind of issue with this entire generation of Xbox controllers was the button layouts were kind of weird of like trying to reach down and hit like the, the white and black buttons yeah. yep. was just, it was super it was awkward. Out of the way. Yeah. You know um, the big thing I'm going to give him points for? Yeah. The quick release uh, cable. cable. Kids these days, you youngsters. Spoiled. You're like, oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no, ah! And then you rip your console off the wall. This here had Bombie's a quick mad. release on here that would just kind of go poop. I'm going to lean towards C on this one. Middle of the road, fine, big improvement, yeah, but not. I'll, 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 I'll agree with C. All right, what is next? <laughs> the apple pippin i'm curious to like anyone in the audience has anyone used the apple pippin in anything other than like a hotel or something oh, in the in man. like the late 90s that's pretty much the only place that pippins were really used was yeah. in hotels as like you could buy games or play games through the hotel infotainment system. If you're confused about why we're talking about an Apple Pippin, yes, it is from that Apple. So in the mid 90s, Apple went through uh, an interesting time. They they had some teenage growth 
issues. Ergonomically, it was horrible. There's a lot of extra controller sticking out of your hands in the back. Like, it's just, you're just wrapping your like, hands. If around. I had banana for scale, you know, I'd have a lot of extra banana in my hand. Well, don't we all have that problem? Uh, I'm going to give this one an F tier. You can I'm, go like, F? I'm giving this one an F. All right, show me a real controller here. The Sega Saturn 3D pad. I'm not going to lie. I don't think I've seen this in my life. Gun to my head, I couldn't even tell you that this was real. Kenzie, this is all you. What are we ranking this one? I have literally no idea. It looks bad, but I don't know. It did have like an analog stick, so that was kind of cool. Oh, on the Saturn. Okay, okay. This was like if you were carrying around a manhole cover. <laughs> but Oh, see. Five letters more than I would have given it. That's okay, D, because Matt is salty. No, no, no. You already said C. Don't let him bully you. Okay. I like that. I like that you know how this works now. Moving on. The Xbox One, Matt. This is going to be a tough one. The Xbox One did make some key improvements over the 360. I do think it's a more comfortable controller. It's a little bit larger. To me, this Xbox One controller was my favorite controller of this generation. The Making DualShock a lot of good 4. points for an A. I No, I'm going to agree. I think A is a good spot for the Xbox One. Good, great, probably my favorite controller of the time, but still, I don't think it quite earned that S. I'm going to so, say I, Yeah, yeah. We got some heavy hitters coming up. The DualShock 3. Uh, um, okay. Here's the thing. It was fine. Did you ever see the prototype? What was it? Uh, boomerang controller? Yeah, I did. Yeah. I think what happened was they were going to do that and people said, oh, that's dumb. So they just grabbed DualShock 2 and slapped a new label on it. What do we give the PS1 controller? We give PS1 B. I feel like we got to give this one B as well. I'm actually leaning a little bit more towards C because it's basically the exact same thing as what came out 10 years beforehand. You really think this is B? Fine, I'll, I'll give you a C. I'll oh, give man, you a C. It's, 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 and then I when gotta... we argue, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna play my my uh my you, card on you. You'll, you'll get you get one veto over me. All right, moving on to the next one. We have the NES. Oh, that's a tough one because this sucks. The problem was it was square, and I it was not comfortable me, to hold. Yeah. But like you had like if we take off our nostalgia glasses, yeah, this is bad. It's not a good controller. I'm gonna go with D. I completely agree. I'm glad you said it before I did. Yeah, D. It, like the sharp edges were a no, thing. I... Someone's gonna be in the comments of like. Um, my entire childhood was built on this, and this controller is what set the, the stage for everything. Shut up. Just because it's old doesn't mean it's good, which is basically my life <laughs> So let's move on to the next one. DualShock 2. This is a little bit of a tough one because while I'm not a huge fan of the 3 because it was the same controller, the DualShock 2 was also basically the same controller. <laughs> As much as like I didn't love the Xbox controllers and I have some fondness for the GameCube, I like this more than any of the other controllers of that generation. I'd lean toward B. I'm gonna I'm giving it B. I, right? It, it wasn't great, it, but it was certainly it is still an good for time. Yeah. Moving on. And television. <laughs> F. Yeah. Okay. I'm fine with that. That's not, that's not good. <laughs> Moving on. The Xbox Elite. Oh. S tier. S tier. S tier. S tier. S tier. It's too expensive for S tier. Uh, it's regularly on sale. You know what is also on sale? The controller that comes in the box that you have to pay extra for. I'm not gonna argue with you. That this is one of the best controllers you can buy. What I'm gonna argue with is if you are going to qualify as S tier, you need to come in the damn box. It's an enthusiast thing, right? Like to me, it's, it's a strong yeah, that's tier. Fair. I like it, but it's so expensive. I'm pretty firm on A on this one. Hit you with this thing though. The Wii oh. Remote. Where does this go, Matt? I got to give it a C. The Wii a C? I'm giving it right in the middle. I'm including the nunchuck in this yeah, as well. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Yeah. Um, which was kind of feed the purpose of the wireless that you were tethered to it. Did you ever throw one of these into your Never. TV? You actually broke a TV? Oh, we broke multiple TVs. What is wrong with you? Because we're like, how hard are you? Sports when you bowl, do you bowl like this or do you bowl like? Yeah, but I don't let go of the controller. I never threw my controller. I think the Wii controller is deserving of a B. Let me tell you why. Yes, it did not have rechargeable batteries, and yes, it was a little bit weird. But here's the thing: it had motion controls, which really you bought a Wii because of the controller, right? Well, can we talk about how expensive the motion bar was? I don't know if you ever did the trick, because when that thing inevitably broke, because it yeah. always did, because the wire was thinner than my mm. will to live what you would just do is you'd go you'd have to go out and buy candles and you put two oh. candles on the on the edge of the tv like I that's why i give it a trick. c versus a b I, look i i feel pretty strongly that this is worth a b this sold 100 million wii's i disagree with you i think really fit sold 100 million wii's no kenzie can you please give so did so that here. uh that i would still put it in b because uh this thing was like kind of revolutionary Thanks for backing me up. I appreciate you. <laughs> All right, moving on. We've got the GameCube. This is a really divisive one because people love this or people don't care. I liked the way that the L and the R felt. It's way better than the N64 controller. I'll say that right off the bat. I'm just going to put my cards on the table. I think this is a solid B controller. This was far better than the Xbox, the Xbox S controller, and that's C tier. So I, I got to say it's got to be B. I want to do C on this. I think there's a, a world where this was the N64 controller, and yeah. they said, you know what? 
let's just swap the buttons around. It does come in atomic purple. A great color. We'll, we'll, I'll give it B, strictly because of the color. Yes. Okay, right. I'm about to get in trouble. S tier. I love this controller. I, this I gotta is, give it. It's S. It's, I, right? I, 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 I playing Gran Turismo with the Dual Sense is by far the best racing game experience I've ever had. Feeling yeah. the the emotion of everything. It's comfortable. Still has the touchpad. I think it looks good. I have basically no complaints about this controller. Uh, to me, it is hands down <laughs> the very best controller on the market right now. Even above the Elite, in my opinion, just because of the motion and everything. I love this controller. I can't argue with that. I, I, It's a great controller. I can't, I can't. I'm looking at our tier list though, and I'm feeling good about this tier list. Tier list. Uh, people in the comments are like, um, you forgot to mention this one controller that only three people in the world use because it was only Guitar sold Hero. Guitar in Hero. a back ab alley in Japan between the summer months of 1948 and- The disdain that you have for the audience, Matt, is something to behold. The Wii U gamepad. Oh no. Hey, Nintendo. Hell no. Fuck you. Hell no. I can only think of two games that yep. like properly took yep. took use of this. Mario Party, we got to be yep. Bowser and cheat, and it was Batman uh, Arkham, Arkham yeah. where it was like your utility belt. If you look at it as a historical item that was a predecessor to the Switch, sure, makes sense. You look at this as an actual controller, it's trash, right? Not only do you have to stay obviously close to your Wii, it was not an actual like tablet that you could take with you. It had to be connected and got all of its video wirelessly from the Wii U. Yeah. Now they had like some TV functionality and stuff, but like it was unwieldy. Like I really, really disliked the Wii U. And the fact that we got the Switch, thankfully, means that the Wii U is essentially just relegated to the sands of time. This is F tier. This is easy F tier. This is F tier. But here's where I'm gonna be controversial. Okay. In the early era of, you know, pre 3D mm -hmm. games, this I think was the best controller that was ever made. It was comfortable to hold. Mm. It had like a great button layer. It gave you actually like extra buttons. This is where I'm like A tier, A tier. I, I will give you that it's not a huge difference. And if you want to veto, I'm happy. To I'm vetoing A tier. Okay. All right, A tier, I, fair enough. I won't argue that one. It is a good controller. Just not a great controller. Genesis is better. The Xbox Series X slash S. This is a little bit of a tough one because it's essentially the Xbox One controller. A. Okay. Well, then no, no point in talking about that one anymore. A tier. It is a very good controller. If the DualSense did not exist, this would be probably my favorite controller you could get right now. Where it falls flat, I think, is the fact that it's essentially the same as the Xbox One, which to be fair, nothing was really broken. It's some like tweaks. If stuff. it ain't broke, don't fix it. Woo! Woohoo! Woohoo! <laughs> Hello and welcome to This Is. Today we're going to be looking at the most expensive, weirdest collector's editions from games. And I got to preface, yeah. I have almost never looked at a collector's edition of a game and said, yeah, I want that. You're a damn liar, Matt. You had the PS4 Pro Spider-Man edition in your house. I've seen it. The thing is, though, we've been upgraded today. So some very kind commenters have pointed out that Matt keeps stealing my answers. And I'm what? tired of that. That's so never been, what are you to, talking about? Well, Kyle's doing it. We're going to be writing our answers down on these marker boards and revealing them so that there can be no shenanigans. again. So we're going to guess the price of the collector's edition, what it sold for. What's our first item? The Resident Evil 2 Remake Collector's Edition. It was released in 2018 and it came with a typewriter. So this is a mechanical keyboard that is themed to look very similar to a typewriter. I will say we took a look at a typewriter themed keyboard on Mystery Tech many years ago. And I will say I hate it because the round keys sucked. So this has rolls of ink ribbon it also has the return lever, which is the enter key. And the paper rack allows you to hold your phone or tablet where you can type your Resident Evil fan fiction on a period correct keyboard. Clearly this is gonna be expensive because I know that buying one of these like typewriter style mechanical keyboards is still probably gonna be uh, 200 bucks or something. And then obviously you've got to add the Resident Evil markup. I think I have my answer. Um, I have my answer right now. Three, three two, two, one. one. Oh, that's actually Two, not bad. 279. 399 is my guess. $900. $900. I think I get half a point no, because no. this is made by QWERTY Writer, who sells an extremely similar keyboard without the Resident Evil branding for $249. You know, With I'll give it to Austin. Yes. What? I get a point. If you want to buy one of these right now, it is $1,200 on eBay. All right, so point for Austin, as it should be. Hey, gamers, I know that you don't compromise. 
But you know what you should do? Save compromise. some damn money. You should compromise Stop a lot. Stop putting $900 Resident Evil things on your credit card with a 21.99% APR, okay? If you stop buying $900 collector's edition, maybe you too can move out of your mom's basement by the age of 42. Oh my God. Okay. Oh my this God. This is the Grid 2 Mono Edition. It is a one of one that came out in 2013. It was able to get 170 miles an hour on 280 horsepower. And they made a limited one of one edition of this of course you get not only the ps3 but everything but you also get the car and you get yourself a day at the bac factory for the tour you get to customize the car race suit helmet boot the whole thing joel dead mouth zimmerman himself bought this because we well, you know what why not i'm gonna say i think i have an unfair advantage do you have any idea just ignoring all the the special edition stuff do you have any idea how expensive one of these bac monos are no i'm gonna guess somewhere in the neighborhood of like sixty thousand dollars would be my guess so okay. that would just be the base level for what I would Okay, do. well, I'm still gonna ignore you, so. I'm gonna just, yes. Ready? We're going in very opposite directions. Three, two, one. $99,999. 1.2 million. <laughs> I told you that it was a $60,000 car. Oh. $190,000. That's a lot of money, but for a one of one and like the whole experience and also dead mouse. Okay, well, you know what? Look, sometimes you gotta go big to go home. The Assassin's Creed Origins Dawn of Creed Legendary Edition. Oh no. There's 11 items. So it included a gold steelbook edition, a 28.7 inch statue of the protagonist and his eagle. It comes with uh, the game soundtrack and yep. season pass. Oh, it better come with the <laughs> DLC. <laughs> you think we're four figures? I think we, we might be four figures here. I'm holding my, my eagle close to my chest on this one. This is one of those ones where we realize that Matt doesn't know anything. All right, right let's three, two, one. Four ninety nine. Seven ninety nine. Eight hundred dollars. That's two points for Austin. Ah. That even though there's only two hundred of these things, some Assassin's Creed heads. What do they call themselves? Ass pants. No. no. <laughs> Next up, we have the Dying Light My Apocalypse Edition. Oh my god. Four signed steelbook copies of Dying Light, because. Why? You spend so much money, you better be able to play with your friends. This also came with an IRL zombie shelter so you could keep all those friends out. So it also includes a trip to Poland to visit the devs and you get to play a rigged match with them. You get to be like, aha, I beat the devs. But here's the real kicker. It also included some night vision goggles uh -huh. and a big stack of adult diapers. So you never have to stop playing for one <laughs> moment. But I thought it was more so it's the game scary as you might poop your pants. When the real zombie apocalypse happens, you could be covered because they give you zombie survival parkour lessons. Wait, you parkour away from the zombies? Yep. You go, oh yep, yep. Oh. And then you're away from them right into your shelter. Wow. You get two Razor headsets, which seems weird considering they give you four copies of the game. And then finally, a life-size zombie oh statue. So when you're looking at it, you're shooting mm. your pants. Boy, this is so, there's so much stuff in here. I think we have to just throw some egregiously high numbers at it and just assume. Here's the real sales pitch here. When the zombie apocalypse happens, your money is no good. You might as well spend it on this to not only have a great time, but to prepare yourself. All right. Three, two, one. 50 grand. 750,000. What is wrong with you, Matt? Matt, are you even trying right now? I, this is not 750,000. It's I, not. Oh! Wow. Wow. No real evidence that anyone has actually taken them up on this because Dying Light is not a great game. I think the real problem was that there wasn't enough diapers. So, like, if they had added mm. a couple more diapers with that, yeah. uh, they would have, this would have sold. Can I get a half point of pity for at least getting in? Guessing those six figures. Why not? You have no points. <laughs> <laughs> Path of Exile Ruler of Ray Class Pack. With this, you get to design a unique item and monster that appear in the game, which I will say that is legitimately cool. You get an IRL statue of said monster and 10 codes for friends to get as a pet. If this was a game that you're really into, and you happen to have more money than you need, then I could see that this is a really cool thing, right? Being able to design it, you get the statue, you get to share it with your friends. You're just gonna go, oh, you're just gonna go for it. Oh, okay, all right. Uh, I have no context for this. I'm gonna guess it's a lot, but I don't think it's gonna be that much. You ready? All right, three, two, one. $10,000. 15,000. Oh, you know what? I, see, We're I actually think, not too far away I there. think I'm actually pretty low. It's 12,500. Come, come on! Directly in the middle. Come on! No point. So it's the giant sparkle dog. <laughs> I think that's what he called him. Another is a drop bear enemy and a koala pet. Uh, maybe, maybe why don't we do this? Why don't we each get a point? Oh, the COD Modern Warfare 2 Prestige Edition. You remember 2009, Matt? It was a good year. Remember when 
we didn't have anything better to do besides drink Mountain Dew and play Call of Duty all day. I miss those days. When you have these additions, you want them to be high quality, right? Well, the head came in two pieces and you like put them together and then there's like this awful visible seam down the middle of it. This it felt like something that you would see like on display at Ikea. I do remember though, seeing back in 2009, YouTubers do unboxings. This was one of the first special editions I remember actually seeing people unbox. Oh. You got Soap McTavish in a box. It was John Duty. Again, I know that these goggles were not good, but think, this is when Call of Duty was, in my opinion, kind of hitting its peak. Yes. If it helps, Matt, I think they made a lot of these. Okay, three, two, two one. one. 199. What? 199. What? $700, Matt, it's not $700. 150 bucks. I'll, I will gladly I, take the point on that one. If I remember right, this thing was like still at Walmart like a year later for like 50 bucks on clearance. I'm, I'm in, yeah. You know what, Matt? It's okay. How about this? How about you take the lead on this next couple and I will make a hilarious guess. Give you a chance of catching what? up. <laughs> I think I've got so many points that I don't All have right. to try anymore. So you just, just, you know what? Do your thing, Matt. Dead Island Riptide. Oh. The zombie bait oh, Wait, well, hold on a second. Is that, is, is, is that? Yes. Is that, it's okay. So this comes mm. with a literal bust. <laughs> So this included a steelbook art case, game, artwork cards, exclusive weapons, and the thing that people got a little upset about, a dismembered bloody torso in an American flag bikini. A lot of the people found this controversial and distasteful. What, really? Uh, I can't mainly imagine Mainly because there was an option to have the UK flag on it. <laughs> but... <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, I keep looking at it and I don't like it. I can't help but notice there's blood everywhere except... <laughs> except one specific um, area? All right, ready? Three, that. two, one. 150 bucks. 299. Two ni I think you're too high, man. That's too high. $156. Two points. Mm. What was that about you always win and that you're so smart and uh, everyone loves you? Look, I would. Can we just, before we continue on with this wonderful video, and of course, remind you, dear audience, to subscribe and ring a ling the ding -a ling button for Austin's dominance. Matt, how do you feel right now? Do you like to describe to us the, the, the thoughts going through your mind right now? I'm gonna throw you. <laughs> Are you gonna turn me into the zombie bait edition? Yeah. Saints Row 4, super dangerous wad wad. Wad wad? Wad wad. wad, wad. Much wad. like everything in Saints Row, Mr. this was Down. just absolutely insane. So this included a week-long trip to Dubai, flights included, a week-long trip to Washington, D.C. and flights, which is great, except you also got spy training day, which was... A good idea before I yeah, go. Yeah, before I do, to, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah like course. to two capitals of countries. You had the plastic surgery of your choice, a new wardrobe and personal shopper, a Lamborghini Gallardo. Gallardo, you insolent pig. You got a supercar membership for 12 months with that. But if you don't want to be driving that around, you also got a Toyota Prius. Why? What? And then you got the Virgin Galactic Space Flight, which <laughs> is just now happening. This puts you on so many red flags for so many government agencies. Can we just say no one bought this? No one bought this. This is a pure PR As soon as you head to buy, I immediately think some, some dude bought this. Some Saudi prince bought this. Three, two, one. I said 2.5. 2.5 and 5 million. Look at that. We're, these are actually good guesses. These are good uh, guesses. One million. Matt gets a point. Let's <laughs> go. Wait, hold a second. That's actually a lot of stuff for a million dollars. Yeah, that is Not that I would ever spend a million dollars on this or anything. What's the Lamborghini? That's a couple hundred grand. The Virgin uh, Galactic Space Experience, that's got to be like half a million dollars. You get the flights, so that's another, I don't know, 30, 40 grand. You get a Prius, it's another 30 grand. I could, I could turn myself this, into a different person this, with a plastic this, surgery. This is, and I can't believe I'm about to finish the sentence, might be the most reasonably priced collection this year. I, I actually, I actually think that. Borderlands, the handsome collection, clap trap in a box edition. This is a 2015 release which had 5,000 copies. You got Borderlands 2 in the pre-sequel, the steel case, 12 lithographs, and you also get an app-controlled robot called Claptrap. All right, I'm just. I th I'm feeling good about my guess. I've got a good reason. I've never guess. felt good about any one of these but guesses. Keep in mind, Matt, 5,000. So a lot of people bought this. So don't guess. But $1,600, okay? All right, three. Two, one. Two ninety nine. Four ninety nine. Oh, I think I got this. This one. has got a working robot. I think I got this one. Boston Dynamics developed this. <laughs> Three ninety nine. Oh! oh! We should just start averaging our guesses, and that's the real. It's like the wisdom of the crowd. We're about to guess how many jelly beans are in the jar and win a horse. So the fucked up thing is, <laughs> this costs more than what they paid the voice actor for Claptrap, and then Boy. the CEO pushed him. Allegedly. Yeah. You always have to use the word allegedly. 
Allegedly. The dying light. Oh, this is another dying light one. So they come back with a even more hilariously over the top collector's edition so they can finally make it on the front page of Kotaku. You get a supporting role in Dying Light the movie. Did that ever happen? Nope. Okay, it didn't happen. Nope. Got it. Okay, cool. You get to voice a main character in a special version of the game. Don't know if that happened. Acting, stuntman, parkour, off-road driving lessons, a screening tour, 10 VIP tickets for opening night. Let's just be clear that this did not happen because this movie did not happen. Look, the real telltale here yeah. is, is the four signed copies of the game. That's not, that's that not really one. shows you what the value is. Well, yeah, it's the only thing you actually That and the copy of the movie script, which, which you would need not... if you were in the movie. <laughs> well, I'm, I, uh, I got... 25 grand. 10, 10K. You see 10K? 10 million? <laughs> They're just trying to get you to fund the movie. Oh, but all these other movies, you know, cost like $300 million. Yeah, because they have stars in them. So here's the thing. Seven years later, this movie has still not come out. Probably because no one bought this and funded the movie. Oh, hello. I'm not supposed to tell you all this. Okay. The movie will be coming out in two years. Two years? And you can watch for your boy. Do you wear the hat in the movie too? Is that I, how the zombies find you? Because they see. I'm allowed to wear the hat. All right. If I paid my ten million, all right, I got my sister's yeah, welfare they check. <laughs> I went. I went down to the Seven yeah. Eleven. I got a couple scratchers. Okay. I won. Okay. Of course you did. And I invested that money in a project I believe in. Because I'm gonna be getting royalty checks out the butt. Oh no. Marvel never heard of it. Dying Light. That's gonna be an Oscar winner. I'm feeling good. I good? think I, I think I can pull out the victory for this. Okay. If I get this, no. Spot on. No. I win. No. Seaman. <laughs> no, no, no. Say it right. C space man. This is not only just a limited edition version of the game. Oh no. This is a limited version of the console. I don't know what this game is, but I am so upset by the face. Creature. The game is you take care of this awful thing and you talk to him. It had a microphone attachment and he talks back to you. And in the English version, he's voiced by Leonard Nimoy. What? Yeah. All right. So $400 or 40,000 yen because that was back when the exchange rate was uh, oh, I, not as good. I did my today exchange rate. Which is 722,000 yen. What the hell? I, I said $500. So this is 34,800 yen, which for the 1999 exchange rate was $308, although that's $562 in today's money. I'll just say that I guessed $400, which is pretty much in between, and I guess 40,000 yen, which I will say is very close but, to 34,800. But I guess today monies. My dude, you literally have an extra zero on yours. I think this one should be thrown out because Kinsey just wanted an excuse to show us a screwed up looking fish man. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what, and though? This is $2,600 on eBay. So that's a little bit closer to your nonsense thing. So that means I win, right? Because I got... But I also guessed almost the yen exactly. Ah. What the final score? That is 10 to 3 and a half. Final score. Hello and welcome to This Is. Sony likes to think that they have the superior... Uh, controller when it comes to the dual, dual sense. sense. What are you, Spider-Man over here sensing things? Well, today we're going to tell you what's better than the dual sense. Starting out with this Donkey Konga Bongos. You actually had them prepped. Yeah! <laughs> These are better than the dual sets, I have no doubt, because you know what the dual sets can't do? Bongo, Bongo with friends. Actually, we had this when we built the Ultimate GameCube. Ken and I had a delightful time. The only thing it didn't come with was bananas. The Wu Tang PS1 controller. This was a tie in with the Wu Tang Shaolin style album that was released in 1999. Wait, I've never seen this in my life. You've never seen this controller. I've never seen the Wu Tang. You're just a hater because you haven't mastered the Shaolin style. The Wu Tang controller was the best one. It was released after the Dual Shock. Okay. But it had it was like for the PS1, so it didn't have like all the Dual Shocky features. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it also gave you Carpal Tunnel, which was just an added bonus. Like, does your Dual Sense give you Carpal Tunnel? When's the last time your Dual Sense has given you anything? You're no, only that, don't that. like these because you haven't mastered the Shaolin style. I'll tell you, as someone who owns a real baby, that shit's a lot of work. So instead, you could get the Wii Baby. Now, maybe this wasn't exactly a controller, but this is an accessory that was bundled with babysitting mama for the Wii, and this was basically something that you stuffed a Wii remote into. Where? No, 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 just let it Where? sit with you for a second. You Where did you stuff the remote? Into the baby. 
as someone who had three of my kids taken away, did you shake them too hard? How hard did you shake them? I didn't get to. Well, you want the wee baby? It'll make you feel better. It's better than the dual sense. I'll tell you that. That is a weirdly like thick tuff of hair for yeah. just being on one. For a big bald baby, head. I'd get that checked out actually. You know what? I wouldn't get checked out because it is fine because it's great. <laughs> This is a Resident Evil oh. chainsaw. Talk about segways. So this was released with Resident Evil 4 back in 2005. Based on extensive play tests, the execs high up that you're way above our pay grade said this vastly improved the experience for playing ah. Resident Evil 4. And here's the thing. It did not. Now they are an awesome set piece and I wish we had some to put around. But like as far as like actually playing, these just did these weren't it, Chief. You know what's Dude. better than both the Resident Evil Chainsaw and the Dual Sense? What? The Dreamcast fishing rod. Um Yes, friends. Who needs your fancy rumble, your speaker, your touchpad, your beautifully crafted little PlayStation icons everywhere? That's all nonsense for losers. You know what's better than playing video games? Fishing. Because fishing is how you go outside, you're one with nature, you sit in a boat, you float, you maybe have a couple brewskis, and then you go home with uh, your empty bait thing that you dumped out and you told your family that you caught a bunch of fish and you let them go because you're in fact a failure and everyone's really disappointed with you. If you're gonna go out with the boys, you're gonna go bring your fishing rod out, you gotta come home with something. But if you stay home and play your Dreamcast, no one's gonna question you. They're just gonna think you're a weird loser and ultimately yeah. you'll have the exact same amount of fish at the end of the day. This actually had real motion control. Yeah. So it actually was compatible with both the Virtua Tennis and Soul Calibur. Would you in fact say that it would be the cast of your dreams? <gasps> Kinsey, I'm gonna need you to sit outside for the remainder of this video. <laughs> the whipped cream. Ah, bad, no. Okay, Matt. What you got then? What's better than the Dreamcast fishing rod and disappointing your family? Easy. Let me just pull this out. Katana the Soul Controller. Uh, this is from Hori, the legendary Mad Lads. It was the first product of theirs to come to the U.S. and it was actually this a Dual the first Shock Hori controller in the U.S. Yeah, and so it was basically just a Dual Shock yep. inside a katana, and it had motion controls, and you could just go. We went to go buy it with your credit card, but it was declined. And good thing because they are thirteen hundred dollars new in box right now. Moving on. The GameCube keyboard. This was, in fact, the greatest gaming hardware ever crafted by human hands. And when I say human hands, you need three or four of them to use this big motherfucker. Have you ever imagined a GameCube controller with a keyboard on the inside of it? Well, that's exactly what you get. Imagine showing up to a Smash Brothers tournament with this. You have your full controller, and then you set down your lap, you go, type, 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 enter, pick up the controller, and you get back to owning the noobs. You don't need a full-size keyboard to type F in the chat when you get your ass kicked online. I the know. only way it's gonna make this better is when Razer inevitably makes their own version of it. And it's I'll got, buy it. It's got their optical Razor, mechanical switch. if you make a GameCube controller, I, no, you can just- Razer, you can, now I know what- This is branded, tweet at wait, Razer, oh, that good you look. wanna see a this is branded keyboard. Let them know that Austin sent you. I'm gonna get a call from our friends at Razor. It's like, hey, please stop telling everyone to give us bad ideas. We're not gonna do this. This is a bad idea. You know what isn't a bad idea, Matt? The Dreamcast Maraca! For Samba de Amigo. It was a rhythm game, but with maracas. And they rattled like a good maraca should. I wasn't paying attention to anything you said. I was just maracaing. I'd much rather go Dreamcast fishing than Dreamcast Mar the Tony Hawk ride skateboard controller. Matt, you can't even argue with me on this one. You know. No, this, this was actually great. I, I actually really, this was really fun. Put yourself back, my friends, in 2009. A year full of prosperity, of joyous times, and of nothing but world happiness and delight. Uh, all that was not true, but you could ride on a Wii skateboard. What more could you ask for? The one thing you could ask for with this is that it would actually work. It was more of a cool concept and it was only $120. I would say a bargain compared to stepping on your Wii remote because that definitely wouldn't work. It's about the same level of like authenticity to skating. Moving on, the Mega Jockey 9000, which just sounds like something we made up. This is amazing. So this was for the Steel Battalion and needed 44 inputs, two joysticks, throttle handles, radio channel dials, five switches, an eject button, three foot pedals. This thing looks dope. It was $200 though, and it was only usable on one game. This would be dope for something like uh, Star Wars Squadrons, which I like playing. Yeah. But again, it's, you know. It looks dope. I will say it looks really, really dope, but 
There's no way you can argue that this is better than the Dual Sense. I can. How many foot pedals does your Dual Sense have? None, because the Dual Sense exactly. is a bad controller. Because what a good controller is is Dragon Quest Slime for Switch. Hori, are you okay? Again, this is only for people who don't have hands. Because if you have hands, you will have to grasp it and then do it like this, which is not exactly the way you want a game. But it looks dope, right? It is absolutely massive. It does come with a treasure chest and a display stand because that's the only place that you will ever want to look at it because it's dumb. Can I let you in on an embarrassing story about the slime controller? Yes, I, please. Like my friend had it. Uh huh. And I was using it because that was the only second second switch. Controller. You actually used this seriously? I we were, we were playing Mario Kart. Okay. And so you know you flip it upside down. It's got the little little tip of the butt. I just like dock that in my belly button. Oh good lord, good it lord. Just, we gotta censor that now. I just think. Play it. It was it was sitting in my treasure chest. Oh, and, Aaron, uh, can you it, please like, censor all of that? Literally, I, I, every was, I was locked and loaded. I take it back. Uh, this is not better than the Dual Sense. Matt's story has ruined it. The slime controller. But you can put a hat here. on him. He had a little hat. Not after what you did to him. That face. That's a smile of pain and he agony. Me like a hat. No. 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 We have the Xbox Connect. You've which, already given up. You have you already given up? I won. Already won the points. What? There are no points in this. Aaron, if you could if you could roll back the point system right here and just show. If you're feeling like a star, you can't stop my shine. I'm loving Cloud City. I'm solo. I'm Han Solo. I'm Han Solo. Are you trying to tell me though? Seriously. All jokes aside, you know, leave your jokes at the door. The, the Kinect was good. When they first announced the Kinect, they way overhyped it. Remember they showed the kids scanning the skateboard and it was like as if he could just bring in any household item and suddenly it was part of the game. Yeah, that shit never flies. I will agree. The Kinect was interesting. There's no way it was better than DualSense because you know what was better than the DualSense? The Densha Digo controllers just uh, go by train. Have you ever wondered what it's like to drive a real life Japanese commuter train? No. Well, I'm gonna fill you in. You use this and you go and stop. You could even apparently use the N64 mic so you could announce stations to your passengers. <laughs> so this one is specifically for the Switch, but millions of people have purchased these. Are you familiar with Penn and Teller's Smoke and Mirrors? No. So this was a series of video games and it was a series of joke games. The one that is been the most famous is called Desert Bus. Oh, Desert Bus. I am familiar with Desert Where Bus. You yeah. drive from it's Vegas to like uh Arizona in real time for like 9 hours. And just you're in the desert and when you go get to your destination, that's 1 point. <laughs> and then you turn around and come back 2 points. So they have all these now charity events of like how far can I get in Desert Bus and like people pledge money and stuff like that. And it's a really cool charity. There's literally way more buttons on there than what you're those are all the buttons to uh talk to your fellow train uh you need the n64 mic for that one but you know what you don't need the n64 mic for the skyward sword for switch <laughs> wait this is a real thing yeah it's a joy con controller uh holder so when you swipe too hard your games, games go games flying go fly. everywhere yeah yeah like how many tvs did i ruin because you know you don't have the the, the lanyard mm -hmm. uh, and you just feel like kind of like hey <laughs> I always practice safe weeing. Strap it up. Otherwise, you're going to lose control of your Wii and you're going to be in big trouble. Well, it's not but better than DualSense, though. It is. No, it's not. How many games can your DualSense store in it? Okay, fine. You got me there. Yeah. The Intel Wireless Series Gamepad. Now, you might see this and you might think, that looks a little sus. And then you might look at it closer and go, that looks real sus. What? This was, though, a completely wireless controller for PC. Remember, this was not a thing back in 2000. Trust the, the good folks at Intel to always be pushing the levels of susness in the PC space. Let me ask you one important question. No, I don't think you need to. It's fine. We can move on. We're done. We Why on. did it have to look like this? Because, Matt, this looks like the something... wires had to be on the inside, this not the like outside. This something that would be in... No. Subscribe to our OnlyFans, get the uncensored version, and they see what this is actually used for. Oh, Moving on, though. Oh, no, no, cut that, cut that. But we have Listic. <laughs> A blast from the past of one of our old This Is episodes, the Listic for the Atari 2400 was released in 1981. It was a great it. gift for your kids. You can squeeze your Listic. Yeah. Come on, kids, give 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 Listic a squeeze. <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you what though, I've been training to use Listic since about 1992. Sometimes you gotta give a little. 
while you're playing with the stick, you know what I was playing with? The Nintendo Power Glove. From the Wizard. What do you need in a controller? I don't know, the ability to control things? Wrong. Controlling is overrated. Instead, you want the coolest looking a pad that's attached to your glove of all time. I'm noticing all of these things that are better than the DualSense are all pure motion control where you didn't need a controller. Are you trying to say that it wasn't the DualSense that we needed, but it was the DualSense that we found along the way? But like so many others, they live long enough to be- uh, To as, turn it back into a forget. controller? I don't know. Matt, did you know you can play PS5 in a car now? No, you can't. Yeah, you can't. The thumbnail begs to disagree. <laughs> Hello and welcome to This Is. Sony took a look at what Microsoft is doing and said, hey, we want a piece of that. They looked at the Microsoft Surface and the Elkintara and said, we want to put that in a car. <laughs> we, <laughs> we got a chance to look at the soon to be released in several years, Afila by Sony Honda Mobility. This is a thing that has been talked about for a while. I believe it was CES 2020. They first announced yeah. that they were thinking about doing a car. CES 2023, just a couple of months ago, they showed off the Afila, which is a collaboration, a 50-50 shot between Sony and Honda, which is a weird combination in a lot of ways. But we actually had time to spend with literally the one and only concept in the entire world. Yes. There's one of these things for reference, this is a concept car. We were not able to drive it. I don't think it drives at all. However, it was loaded with a ton of cool tech, including the ability to play PS5. It has screens, front, back, middle, side, front grill. There's a lot to talk about here because we actually had time to spend with some of the people from Afila, yep. which for reference, is the name of the brand. So the company is Sony Honda Mobility, but the brand is a Fila, right? Sony Honda Mobility, that is the overall uh, the company. Company, and then below that is a Fila with the brand. Yes. Below that will be the names of the cars. So this which we do the, not have yet. This could be the whatever the Kratos, the the the, the Afila, Afila Sackboy. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's gonna be driving an Afila Sackboy. In the year 2027. Mark my words. You can mark it on your calendar right now. I do feel better about Afila being the brand name versus the car name. It's still not good. A lot of reason for that is they're trying to push like mobility and autonomy. There's a lot to break down here. So first of all, why don't we actually just talk about the tech? Because yeah. I think that was the part that is the Which most is really the selling point of it is how much they've crammed into this. They really went all in on entertainment. This is a luxury vehicle. So let's be clear on that. And I will say that like looking at it in stills did not do it justice. Like when I first saw it, I'll be honest, I'll be like, eh, looks like a generic town, whatever. But when you actually see it in person, you realize this thing is massive. So I don't know the exact specs off the top of my head, but this looks as big as something like a Tesla Model X, a Mercedes yeah. EQS, a very large sort of luxury style sedan, which is also going to almost certainly have a very large price tag to match. This is meant to be huge, luxurious. And I think considering that the proportions are really nice, but immediately when you look at it, you see the screen. So as a driver, you have a display right in front of you, which is very common. You also have to the far left and the far right screens instead of mirrors. So you have digital cameras, which to be fair is not a unique thing. So a number of vehicles, especially a lot of European vehicles are offering this as an option. Although unfortunately in the US that is actually not allowed because you have to have physical mirrors. On top of that, there's also one very large display between the driver and the passenger, which in software is split in half, but realistically is actually one large yeah, panel. Yeah, so like. it's, it's basically like having like an ultra wide. So there's a invisible seam down the middle. We were watching a bit of a, a trailer and you could take it and just slide it between yeah. the screens. Very now, cool the way that that works. And then in the back are two fairly large inch screens in the back for the uh, two passenger side. And what's cool is from the front, you can literally just start playing a video or whatever. And you can just go, oh, play it in the back left headrest yeah. and the passenger or whatever. You can control it all and throw it around fairly well. Clearly this is a concept car. This software is nowhere near final. But considering that, it actually was in relatively good shape. Like if you said that this was shipping next year, I'd be like, yeah, sure, check yeah. it out. Unfortunately, I was not able to play PlayStation in it because let's talk about the elephant in the room. They claim you can play PlayStation games in it, which you is can. It's not Matt, incorrect. I literally had a DualShock in my hand and I was playing PlayStation on it. It worked. Asterisk, big asterisk, boom, asterisk. It's big All right. Asterisk. It's remote play. All this tech in here right now, and they did not put in 
an actual PlayStation 5. It has 5G. I don't know of any other cards that actually have 5G right now. Obviously, what you're getting here is really a streaming experience, but the ability for you to play PlayStation on the go, even on like the back headrest or yeah. whatever, is neat. And that was actually, I'll say a shout out to the, the Afila crew. They were very open to like feedback, right? Like they literally were taking notes and like, yes. asking us like what we thought and everything, because this is not going to go on sale until likely around 2026. So there's still a lot of development to do. Not only with building the brand, which is going to take a while, figuring out how this thing is going to be sold, where it's going to be manufactured, how they're going to actually brand it. The impression I got was that they're going to be selling it maybe like online and then they'll do some kind of like delivery kind of thing, but you will actually be buying it from a Fila, not from Sony. You're not going into a Honda dealership. It's really interesting to think about this thing as far as they've got a few years to really build this up and they've got a really good head start. Like honestly, the car was for a concept yeah, like it, was way more fleshed so, out than I thought. Talk about the Alcantara from the beginning. The entire interior, it's Alcantara. So the same material that's on like a Surface keyboard and it Incredible felt soft. so nice. I mean, like we talk about the size of it. I'm a big fucking dude, okay? <laughs> And Ooh. I fit in there perfectly comfortably. It's also kind of neat because when you first walk up to the car, it actually uses facial recognition. So you're, you could obviously, there's an app. Essentially what you do is you walk up, there's a camera on the B pillar. It detects you and opens the door. There actually are no door handles on the concept. That for immediately the backfired version. when we're in there. So that like, when we, when we saw, talk about how they were receptive to taking notes, I'm like, hey, is there like a way to do like a guest or like yeah. for facial recognition? Like, well, why would you need that? And I'm like, what happens if you have someone who's not regular yeah. a part of your, you know, circle who's got to get in your car. They can't get in your car. Well, just use the phone. I'm like, well, it's a great idea on paper and, but the actual execution of it, like a door handle will always be more convenient. Fair enough. But once you get in the car, you realize it's a nice place to be, right? So on top of all of the screens and the software, it also has support for 360 reality audio. I think is Sony's branding for it, but essentially yeah, which was it's spatial audio. It was Okay. So basically we got to listen to one very specially selected track in stereo, which just sounded fine. And then in the full 360 mix, and at least me in the front seat, you could actually really tell each instrument felt like it was completely separated. Obviously with the Sony branding, there were tons of themes around a bunch of Sony movies, which I thought was neat. So there's Spider-Man. The there was only one that matters. I'm a, uh, I'm Morbin. <laughs> and on top of that, the Afila has a screen not only on the grill, but also on the tailgate. And both of those also can change. It was nice because you can use that to see like charging indication, seeing like the weather. They had it like where we're showing like sports game scores. So like they have one that's like actually notifications from your phone. We're like, ah, I don't know if I want the entire public to see that I got a text message from someone. The ones that make a lot of sense is like while it's charging, it's literally a status bar across yeah. the front of the grill. That makes perfect sense. Yeah. It's also just like a little thing to like customize the car a little bit to be you. Yeah. All right, how many white Teslas do you see driving around, especially where we are? Now, having just a little bit of strip there, so that could add a little bit of color, add a little bit of customization. You got Spider-Man hanging on your, sure. your back. Like, it's cool. Part of me is worried that Sony would just do that. Of just like, while you're at a red light, they would just they would just automatically <laughs> turn on. Ad mode. Ad mode. Now, yeah. for some context. So, Afila was only really, or at least Sony like Honda Mobility, has only been like an official proper project for a little while now. I think they said that they launched it, or like, like they actually incorporated it. No, no, they actually incorporated the company last year. So it's interesting to see that they're clearly moving really quickly here, but they have an enormous amount of work to do to not only develop the car for, uh, fully, work on that software, which does seem like really what Sony are bringing in. Clearly what they're trying to do right now as they're building the brand is understand what people like and what people don't like about this. So that by the time in the next couple of years where they're really ready to finalize it for production, they know what they should be doing. I think that they're pretty close. Honestly, I think the car looks pretty good. Probably needs some mirrors, probably needs some door handles. But other than that, like the actual look is pretty much there. I also think that the screens and the tech inside is terrific. Mind you, a little bit more polished on that software. Now, there are a ton of questions about this as far as yeah, the like, power, the range, the price, yada, yada, we yada. We don't have any of that yet. But I'm like, gonna assume the price is a lot. The range will be all right. I had some more granular car concerns with it. The first one is currently it has zero cargo space. Again, this is a prototype, yeah, so let's like whatever. But like at the moment, there is no uh, plan for a frunk. No, so, no, no. Like, they had actually, they had not decided they, that. Well, yeah, but like it's not, it doesn't exist at the moment. As big as this car is, there's not a lot of cargo space in it, period. I will say I've been in a fair few concept in like, you know, pre-production vehicles and they do typically dump a lot of the electronics yeah. and stuff in the trunk while they're working on it. Yeah, so, which is, I'm saying like, if say they move all that out. Yeah. The back part of the car is very small. All the they, leg room you had in the back of the seat right. is, is you're sacrificing some of that car 
cargo space. I know it's a sedan, but like it is a big sedan. I will say that the Frunk is something that they're still deciding on. Now with a lot yeah. of electric cars, you have one of two options. Either you have a Frunk, which is what like a Tesla and some other cars have, but typically that means that a lot of the stuff that is in the Frunk has to be the, then yeah. be moved into the car. Now I personally think that the Afila, it's a big long car. The Frunk area, is huge. So I would like to think that if you open up the hood, they would have at least a little bit of cargo space there, which yeah. is always nice, especially in a sedan. You can have some hidden storage. No one needs to know about it. But I also very much value the fact that there's so much room on the interior. You can really kind of spread out. You don't have this tunnel that's like right beside your yeah, leg. Yeah, I, like, I, I want a little bit more cargo space personally. The other big thing is like, well, who is this for? Because when I think of Honda, I don't think of luxury. I don't why think it's not a Honda. <laughs> well, like I don't think of Hondas as bad cars. They're yeah. very nice, reliable cars. But like again, this is this is gonna be a really pricey vehicle. Why is this not an Acura? What like I, I, I absolutely agree with that. It's very strange, right? Now I get that Sony as a company who want to make lots of money and who've branched out into a ridiculously wide number of electronics, they own movie studios, music, all this kind of stuff. The cars are a fairly natural thing, and this is not like something to cast dispersions on a field or anything. But my question is like, is this really the move? They clearly pretty much committed to it at this point. Right? Yeah, like they developed the company. Like they're, they're going to do this. I get Why? that Sony and Honda, while it seems like it's a sort of strange situation, it does make some sense. Uh, Honda have not really dived that deeply into the EV space, but Sony having the technological experience with the software, obviously as an electronics manufacturer, they know a lot of that. Whereas Honda have years and years of experience building vehicles. That kind of makes sense, but you're right. Why is this not just an Acura? Which clearly that's a brand that Honda owns that are, is also heavily leaning into EVs. Is there gonna be some shared stuff? Maybe is it gonna have like the same platform or same software ever? Probably. Probably. But it just, this feels slightly strange to me. And especially considering that while this looks cool for today here in 2023, the EV space is likely going to be much more competitive three years from now when this eventually goes on sale. And while I don't want to just say like, oh, that means that they should give up. No, I would love no. to see more competition. But I also am a little bit like, it's a big gamble, guys. This is a big gamble and it's good. It's pretty cool. But I'm also not seeing any like massive reasons why you as a consumer should consider buying the Sony Honda I think Honda it's, I think this is gonna be more niche, which is difficult to, to really build the brand if it's niche. We had like, all right, when Tesla first came out, they were like the e like only, right? Like the only EV you could get that was- There, there were a couple of small ones. Yeah, but like- okay. The only like serious EV. So like the, yeah. the I'm talking about Model S, yeah. Like in order to make waves, they had to come out with the three, which was dirt cheap compared to anything else for, yeah, EV, say, for EV. Com for compared EV. to the S, it was much yeah. cheaper, yes. So like my thought is like, are they coming out with this one that's gonna be a $100,000 car? Yeah. So they can come out uh, a few years later and say, here's the Fila 2, which is significantly cheaper. Like get the luxury, but in the cheaper thing. Cause like, there's so many things that I want. I love everything that they've done in it. I, like, I wish more cars would have uh, like the interiors that they had. Here's the thing though, and the thing that concerns me, this is clearly meant to be more luxury focused. Right. If you look at the Mercedes EQS, it looks very similar on the outside and it has a hyper screen, which is almost the same thing. But when you look at that, that is a car that you can buy today. This Afila is years away. So if the Afila can match what's happening today, I don't know if that's gonna be enough. You know, if you look at like why you buy an EV, especially an expensive one, you're looking for a couple different things. Tesla clearly has the performance game down, right? A Model S or Model X, whatever, especially a Plaid, is un freaking believably fast. On the flip side, if you're looking for luxury, you've got Lucid, you've got Mercedes, you've got BMW, you've got a lot of brands who are really trying to lean into that luxurious, sort of smooth, serene experience. And to me, I don't fully understand where the Afila lines up. I think there's too many, at this point, there's too many luxury brands. And think about how many because more like, are gonna be around three years right, from now. Right, right. So like, I, th I feel like the move would have been to try and go somewhere more in the middle. The thing is though, it's it almost is too late for that too, because there right. are so many brands who are creating more affordably uh, priced electric cars as well. But so if it's you like, want to break into the industry from zero, which is what they're doing, yeah. sure. That, I mean, like obviously they have the knowledge of Honda. So it's, they are, they do have the leg up over any other um, company that's com coming from scratch, which yeah, literally has to figure out how to make a car yeah, and then yeah. make Go it bankrupt electric. along the way. <laughs> right. So like, I don't know if the entertainment side of it is enough to launch the brand. With the software support that they've got, with the ability for you to play, you know, videos and watch movies and play games, I do think they should probably just build an actual PS5 inside, right? Yeah. The remote play is nice, but this thing obviously needs a lot of processing power anyway. Throw a PS5 in there. I mean, if you buy a Tesla right now, especially an S or an X, what? it basically has a PS5 chip inside where you can actually play games on Steam and stuff, right? Like it's a very powerful vehicle. That is a thing that you could have bought a year and a half ago that existed. Considering how expensive this is, 
it can't be that much more expensive to throw in uh, basically a PS5. Can, it can still have all the Qualcomm, right, like, the stuff to actually run all the electronics and the, the driverless. And that's actually one of the things we haven't really discussed too much. This thing is very much meant, while of course well, it has a yeah. yoke and it is meant to be driven, but the driverless features are pretty strong. It had something like, what, 45? 45, 45 cameras. Yeah, but the thing is, again, coming back to around, while this is nice, you look at the Mercedes, you look at, uh, they're actually showing off their system, which is level three. And the way that one works is when you go full driverless, you are no longer legally responsible. If you put it in the full driverless mode on whatever conditions that the car deems is okay, you get into an accident or something, Mercedes-Benz are liable for that, right? Which is obviously a huge deal, but they're that far ahead at this point. If this car can barely maybe match that three years later, it's just one of those things, again, I feel like it's good. I would love to see it succeed. I, I'm a little concerned it's too late. I almost feel like this needs to be coming out now, not three years from now, and it's when the like, space is far, far more advanced than it is today. It's like, yeah, it, a lot of EVs have come out in that three years since absolutely. we've seen it at CES. Hello and welcome to This Is. Today we're gonna piss off a bunch of people. Let's get into it. We are gonna take a look at a bunch of Pro controllers. We looked at a bunch of controllers in the last tier list, but now we're going to look specifically at the pro versions of them, and it's going to make a lot of people. First up, we got the What's Wolverine this? from Razer. Okay, so I'm just going to put my cards immediately on the table. I'm not a huge fan of pro controllers personally. Why aren't you a fan? Because I think pro controllers are a clever bit of marketing to convince you that you need to spend egregious amounts of money on controllers that are marginally better. But there is a small gain to be had, and I feel the exact same way about pro controllers. No one needs one of these, but if you want some nice little, you know, quality of life features, I get it. So I'm gonna be fair and unbiased, even though I mostly think you should just use the controller that came with your control console. This one has the super clicky buttons. Oh, this, so this for a long time was my favorite controller. When I PC game, I still use a controller because <laughs> You say that you're gonna piss people off, and that's yeah. the first thing you say. Because right, well, I'm not right. playing FPSs. But like, oh, I'm playing like Witcher Three. I'm like, I'm gonna use a controller. I like a, I like a controller. This guy awesome here was me. great. My only caveat to it, it was as wired only. It's also a uh, hundred and sixty dollars. <laughs> And you obviously had the remappable buttons on the back. Yeah. It had media controls for mic and whatnot on the on the bottom here built in. I'm gonna say D. I'm also gonna okay, cool. put that right in the middle for right now. I like having a good clear palette when we get into this. Go ahead and pick one. For All right. Oh, the Switch Pro Controller. Wait, this isn't a Pro Controller. I mean, I know it it's says Pro. It's the Switch Pro Controller. It's just a And Switch a lot of you yelled at us that it wasn't on the other controller list. Now, the Pro mm -hmm. elements include not being Joy-Cons. End of list. If we were judging this based on like regular controllers, this would be pretty low. But if you put it in the context of pro controllers, and I do think it's a little bit of a nebulous sort of phrase, I actually think it's a much higher just simply because it's only $70, which is a lot of money for a controller. But when half of these controllers are $150 to $200, no, this stands I out. I have the exact opposite. I mean, yeah, it's, pr it's priced accordingly when you're comparing it to pro controllers. So I'm giving this in the context of a pro controller yeah. a C. I totally agree with C. It is miles better than the Joy-Con, but zero pro feature. I'm gonna go. Ba, 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 ba. Yeah. So this is the Scuffed Instinct Pro. Okay. By the way, these are these are actual size. I do have giant hands. Wow. So this is the first of these controllers I have not tried. Have you tried the Scuff? I have. Okay, tell me about it. So it Scuff are weird. Pretty much all, I think, mm. all of their controllers, they're not actually making a, a pro controller. They're modding a regular yeah. Xbox controller, regular PlayStation controller, and adding pro features to it. These are expensive. How much is this one? How much do you think it is? So this is just an Xbox Elite controller competitor, right? $180. <laughs> this is where I hate scuff. $220. No. It, so let me give you the pros of the scuff besi besides okay. it being like Why, why am I spending that much money? The customization on these is absurd. Okay. You can get something like 30, 40 different models of this. Okay. If you want like the ultimate customized controller, scuff is probably who you're going to go with. In a world before like first party pro controllers. Okay. Maybe. Now? I, that's, yeah. too, that's too much money. That yeah. is too much money. I'm going. D. I, I was teetering between C and D. If you want D, I'll well, give it. I'll give D. you the D. Okay, can we get a sus counter up for this video, please? Go ahead and pick one up. Uh, I'm just gonna just do a random. <laughs> is, this what, is this the Elite One or two? That is the Elite One. Elite One. Okay, the Elite One was really the first of the first-party 
Pro controllers. It had the little uh, paddles on the back, which you could add. It had a very nice sort of build. I am tempted to give this some points because obviously no one's going to buy a Series 1 today, right? Like the Series 2 has replaced it. This is the original model. There's a lot of people who complain about stick drift on these uh, for both the Series 1 and 2. Oh, I've yeah. never once experienced that on them. You don't play enough uh, games. No. I you need to be play playing 10 constantly. hours a day. At $150, given the historical context, I actually will make an argument that this is a mess to your controller. No, no, but just hear me out for a second, okay? Before you just shut me down. This set the stage for pro controllers, right? In my opinion, there were pro controllers before the Elite controller and after. This forced Sony to make their own. I can't give it S tier. I okay, cannot. Well, why not? Why not? So like the rumble on it was god awful. It sounded like a bunch of bees were in it. That was what stopped it from being my favorite back in the day. So you want A? I'll give it A. I like, I'll compromise with you on A. Next up, we have... Just randomly do it. No, 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 don't look. We have to mix it up. This is, this is like Wheel of Fortune. Do, 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 do. Oh, the Thrustmaster. Oh, we did a video on this one, didn't we? Not this particular one. We did a video on the Thrustmaster eSwap X, which... Oh, I'm sorry. How could I have possibly gotten those two mixed up? The gimmick on that one was that it has proper like swappable modules so that you could just drop the whole stick module. It's not just the actual like yes! top part. For the X, the S, however, you can only swap the sticks and that that for me takes away the all the fun out of this controller. Also, it looks really ugly. For 130 bucks, I'm giving this a D. All right. <laughs> this is the Thrustmaster eSwap X. Oh, wow. How convenient. This is the controller that we have taken a look at in the past. And I'm going to say that I like this one a little bit more. It's still kind of gimmicky, right? And mind you, I have not thought about this controller in three years since we touched it. So it's probably going to cut to a clip of me saying something very different than my opinion now because I've forgotten about it. Wow. That is a big boy. Wow. As soon as the first party controllers came out, in my opinion, all the third party pro controllers needed to justify their existence. Not to say that these were all useless, but like you had to do something different. You couldn't just be like, oh, I have like uh, swappable sticks or whatever. No, it has to be something properly unique and different. The fact that you could swap out your D-pad and your sticks, you can actually move them around on the controller was cool, right? It's expensive. It was 180 bucks. Yeah. And I remember it wasn't that difficult to swap. No, like no, literally boop, boop, with yeah. magnets. And you could also do something really stupid. You could actually just have three joysticks Sticks. on it. Yeah, yeah. It's really dumb, but you could do it. It's really dumb, but we could do it is like half the videos we've ever made. Yeah. So. For its ingenuity, I'm giving it a B. All right. Matt, be great. The Raikiri from ROG. So this technically is not out yet. So at CES, we went to the ASUS booth and they had a couple of these out. So there's a Raikiri and a Raikiri Pro. Yes. One big caveat with this. I do not believe as of recording this video, we have a price on it We yet. do not. So uh, we were told though it was going to be competitive. I don't think we can put this insanely high just because there are still some questions, but from the limited hands-on time that we did have. The, the comfort level of this. Terrific. Without knowing the price, I'm giving it an A. As soon as I know the price and it's ludicrous, it's Boy, gonna drop down for me. I, I, I do want to agree with you, but we can't say that the Raikiri is on the same level as the Elite Series One, right? It felt amazing in the hand. It was like a good texture. I will say that this is probably the controller that I am most excited for. Like this yeah. feels like the most complete overall package. I will say it's an an A minus. Can I do an A minus? Well, all right, fine. I'll give you an A A minus. I will just say something, uh, Matt. There's a conspicuous lack of PlayStation. This is all Xbox. So here's the problem. Uh, there's one Switch. There's not a whole lot of pro controllers outside of the Xbox space. A are lot you of saying them- that Sony are anti-competitive and bullies and don't allow other people to use their IP? Well, I'm glad you talk about that one because I'm going to pick one for you next. We have <laughs> the Razer <laughs> Wolverine V2 Pro. Offset sticks? Offset sticks, which is interesting if you're, you know, like again, if you're a PlayStation gamer. So like, I appreciate that. How's the dual sense rumbly bits? Not nearly as good as the dual sense. I will say these, it is good. But it's just not, it's quite just not the same as level. good. Which, yeah. if you're not about the full um, tactile experience and you just want a pro controller that will have some adjustability and you know you can have offset buttons and sticks and whatnot, I get it. How much is this controller? What do you think this is? A hundred and nope. seventy-nine dollars. What? What do you mean? It is two hundred. No. And fifty dollars. No. <laughs> Why? Wait, let me let me take a closer look at this. <laughs> yeah, I'll give it to you. My turn. Yeah. Okay. 
the Power A Fusion. This is a controller, I will admit, I have not tried. I also have not tried this one. Okay, so what's the deal with this? The reason I'm including this on the list without having tested it, yeah. and I'm gonna give it a fairly decent score okay. because of the price. Okay. That's $73 for this oh, Wired Pro controller. Wow. That's like almost the same price as a regular Xbox controller. Now see, I can get behind that. If this is remotely okay, that just seems so much more reasonable. Now, mind you, part of the reason why I get a little grumpy about uh, Pro controllers sometimes, it just feels like while I understand that it is useful for a small percentage of the market. It feels like a lot of people just feel like they have to go out and spend these huge amounts yep. of money for something which is such a marginal kind of improvement. For this, this is an actual reasonable amount of money. You can still get the actual like back paddles and some of the like quality of life things, but it's also not going to cost you as much as the damn console itself. I'm giving that a solid B. I, I was thinking B or C. You yeah. want a B? I'll give it a B okay. for the price alone. Bam. Looking at what we have left, we have four left here, but I am noticing that we lost one. We lost one. I lost one. I don't know where it went. Uh, Aaron, what we'll, what we'll do is we'll just pretend like we're holding it up. <laughs> oh, and good then, Lord. And then we'll just... <laughs> Aaron is going to murder you if you make him track that to your hand the entire time. Yeah. $200. So here's the thing. The reflex, I would have placed higher up until a week ago. I would have put that in like probably B... Nah, I feel like a but lower. now that the, the edge is out, I'm gonna say C. So we'll just, Aaron, we'll just slap a boop right there. He's gonna be so mad. <laughs> Moving on. The PDP big, 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 big in gaming. PDP big, big in gaming. Victrix Pro BFG. What that stands for, we'll never know. Stands for me, big fucking gamer. Kind of the same gimmick as the Thrustmaster, where you can actually swap out modules and whatnot. Cool. But it takes it one step further. Are you a big fighting dude who doesn't need a right stick? Big fighting stick? guy. That's me. Yeah, big fighting guy. You could actually take out the right stick completely and have a fighting pad one with six buttons. All the PDP controls I've tried in the past have always been fine as a little brother controller. I would say, having not tried this, I would be a little bit skeptical of the build quality, although would be happy to be proved, proven wrong. How much is the BFG? 180 bucks, which I think is pretty darn good considering how much modularity you get with it, and it is wireless. I'm gonna put it in B minus. Nah, I'll just see. Okay, we're down to the big three now. I'm gonna let you pick. Okay. I'm, just, I'm gonna let I'm you gonna pick. I'm gonna let fate decide. It is the Scuff. Wait, this is the Impact Pro. Oh, this is the DualShock 4 version. Correct. Right? They sent us a customized This Is one. I don't remember. I'll be all. honest with you. I hate it. <laughs> you feel it's like this is? It's got the logo on it. So like, I'm very, very thankful for them. Of, like having the, this logo. The, the plastic that they're using, it just doesn't feel good in the hand. Yeah. You know how much it is? I believe it was, we went for 200. 200? Yeah. Mm. yeah. And so, mm, yeah. Yeah. There are two very auspicious controllers that are absent by their influence in our tier list. Totally and, by random and not me and not, looking at the back look, of them. Look, you may have been random. I've been doing this. We can just get the replays of me not looking down. And I'm just building things. tension. I'm building mystique. I'm building an aura. Matt, would you like to go? No, I, I want you to go. All right. Dual sense edge. Let's Go. The whole reason we decided to do this tier list is because this is just out. We felt like there was finally appropriate time to do a pro controller tier list because yep. of the DualSense Edge. So, and uh, I know you are the mayor of Clown Town when it comes to what? this device. What, yeah. what does that even mean? Yeah. <laughs> I know everything you're going to say, and I'm going to say scoff. I have spent some time. Uh, this will be on a future segment of Mystery Tech that may or may not be live by the time you're watching this. Here's my thought on the DualSense Edge. Very good controller. Battery life, a little bit questionable, but the feel in the hand and everything is pretty much the same as the DualSense. The customization is pretty nice, although I will say they didn't go quite as far as the Elite controller. So you can remap some things, you can adjust like the acceleration on your sticks and whatnot. But largely speaking, this feels like a dual sense with a couple paddles on the back he's about to run for re-election of mayor of clown town <laughs> no, no 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 no. this is his campaign video this is two hundred dollars right look and, at the makeup forming on his face and i will say that while it is a good controller the battery life is subpar and i don't think it gives you quite as much and if you're talking about 200 bucks for a controller which is only marginally better than the dual sense that comes for free with your ps5 i'm gonna say It's actually pretty good. I would give it an A+. I'd give it A+. I'm going to move that to an S. 
in six months when this goes on sale for $170. If it does. It will, because we love the DualSense so much. Yeah. So it's hard to put it anything below that period. It just feels like they coasted a little bit on it. If it would have been well, a little I mean, bit cheaper. Well, I mean, that's just Sony in general. Yeah, like, a little bit cheaper, a couple of extra little neat bits and bobs or some slightly nicer feel or just not terrible battery life. I think it would be S for me. So that leaves us with one. And that is... Elite Series 2, boys! Yeah, this is where it's gonna, it's gonna get controversial. Because... <laughs> uh, I'm gonna be... First of all, I don't think I have an S tier. At all. I think that this is A+. Plus. Whoa, 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 whoa! Hold on, hold whoa. on. Nah. A+. Plus. You haven't even discussed it yet? You can't put yeah. it on the board until we discuss it. I, I did it. The reason I think this is A+, plus, not S. The rumble and fat haptics in these is still garbage. It is okay. bad. Sure. But the girth and heftiness of this controller feels so good in my hands. Do you know the pricing of this thing? I do. You can get the core version for like 130 bucks, which is just a controller. $130. You can go up to 180 bucks and get the full beans version with all the sticks and, yeah, and which bits and bobs and I, stuff. I argue most people wouldn't know, wouldn't need. Here, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to I'm going to put these on equal ground. Okay. At a plus. I think the the edge feels better. Agreed. But not $70 more better. Does that make sense? I will say the DualSense, while it does have some flaws, I actually think is the better controller. Mind you, the Elite Series 2 feels like a very, very well done Xbox Series X controller. Last generation, I thought that the Xbox One had the best controller, period, you could get. I absolutely love that controller. But Sony completely leapfrogged them with the PS5 generation. And Microsoft basically didn't really update the Xbox controller that much this time around. I honestly, if I'm being real, I still like the DualSense regular more than any Xbox controller. But I understand that that That's does fair. not have the That's pro fair. features, right? So it's not part of this conversation. Exactly. It's not on the list. So honestly, Matt, while you're putting that thing on A+, right off the bat, upset me, I'm actually going to agree. I think this is a good <laughs> tier we list. We agree on something. We got the three first parties up top, which is the way they should be. And then we got everyone else down below. I like you say the three first parties, and there's, there's Nintendo. <laughs> It's only on this list because they use the word pro. If they didn't Pretty use the word pro, it would Pretty not fun. be anywhere else. Hello and welcome to This Is. Today we got some gaming console myths. Like, did the FBI make a mind-controlling arcade game? Yes, they did because we made our very first episode of This Is all about the myth of Polybius. Which is actually a myth and not actually a Yeah, thing. this is totally an urban legend. So well, in 1981, supposedly the government placed some arcade cabinets in Portland, Oregon. The game was said to be so addictive that people would fight over who got to play next. And it was reportedly causing hallucinations, amnesia, insomnia, seizures, and night terrors. There were lots of arcade cabinets that were put in test markets. And seeing things come and go, maybe not with final branding. It's not outside the realm of possibility that people got a little punchy on the, the real reason behind the mind-controlling arcade cabinet, especially when there were stories back in the 80s of kids like, you know, gaming for hours and hours and hours and actually having like seizures and stuff because they didn't eat or drink yeah. for 10 hours at a time or something. This is my favorite part of the story. All they had was like orange soda and Coke for like three days straight. And they got so constipated that they had to go to the hospital. Oh, okay. So because they couldn't going. their pants, now there's a mind-controlling arcade cabinet. This one's debunked. Let's see what the next one is. Do PlayStations have a kill switch? This is not a myth that I had heard before we started doing research for this video, but supposedly, especially in Japan, there was a lot of myths that Sony, and specifically for the PlayStation division, were putting in sort of planned obsolescence with their consoles. So the reason this, this was connected to the PlayStation was because the batteries in the PS3 and PS4s, it was the CMOS battery, mm -hmm. and those started to die, and when they were dead, they couldn't connect to the uh, PlayStation network. The idea was is that if at some point in the future PSN no longer works and you didn't have that CMOS battery that was charged, your console wouldn't know the date, wouldn't be able to activate, wouldn't be yeah. able to really do much of anything. Again, like most myths, there were kernels of truth here in that if they didn't fix some of these things, PS3s and PS4s would die at some point. But even though I might not be the biggest fan of some of Sony's uh, decisions when it comes to business, I don't think that they are as nefarious as this to put a hidden kill switch inside their consoles. I mean, they're not Apple with their iPhones. Okay, Matt, that's a that's not a game console that's myth. Not that's not a game a console myth, myth. But you know what is a game console myth? Did blowing into the NES or SNES cartridges fix them? No, absolutely. But yes, of course it did. Like, so did blowing into them help 
with uh, them loading. It absolutely did, but it wasn't the actual blowing that made this work. So <laughs> most people assume the trick worked because they were cleaning dust from the contacts. Yeah. But the NES had a weird connection method. They required zero insertion for it. It's kind of like... As the kids say. Yeah, they wanted it to feel springy, which was cool, especially on the SNES when you had that awesome push button spring. <laughs> However, this caused the connections to kind of bend and wear mm -hmm. out quickly. If you had just unplugged it, plugged it back in without blowing on it, probably would have fixed it regardless of blowing on it. Now, moisture from your breath could actually help with the connection. And that's because, the crazy thing that I think yeah. actually makes this myth a little bit realistic because, you know, but, if your game's not working, you blow on it, you put it in, you're immediately going to think it works. But part of the reason for that was there's condensation in your breath. Having a little bit of extra moisture on the pens could help to bridge those electrical connections. It's also a little bit of a superstitious kind of thing. So people have just kind of continued to do it. You know, it's not superstition. This next myth. Can you fix the Xbox 360 Red Ring of Death with towels? I'm sad to say that I feel we actually have to explain what the Red Ring of Death is because some people we weren't old. alive when that happened. So the OG model of the Xbox 360 that launched in 2005 had what was known as the Red Ring of Death, which is essentially an issue of overheating due to a couple of technical problems when they actually were producing the consoles, which would basically mean that after a while, your console would lock up, you get the three little red rings, Dunzo. It was over. That is not a myth. That was 100% a fact, and it was hugely uh, costly to Microsoft. <laughs> but what was, was how to fix it using the towel trick. As a naive, however old I was, teenager, traded in all of my like PSP, most every video game I had to my local video game store in order to buy a used Xbox 360, and it get the uh, Red Ring of Death about a month after I did <laughs> that. Um, I took it back to them and they fixed it by, I think, doing the towel trick. Can you tell me what the towel trick was? Yeah. Uh, overheat the sh out of your Xbox. So basically you wrapped it in a towel. Let it get super hot. Let it reflow the solder. Let it warp things back into place. The thing was this actually did kind of work, but it kind of worked in the way that you can slow your car down by running into a brick wall. The problem though- But it is wasn't a fix. It was not a fix. In fact, it was very likely to end up killing your Xbox entirely yeah. once you did this a few times. So th the myth that it was a fix is busted. Can you install Windows 10 on the Xbox One or Series X? The thing is, is that while the Xbox One and the Series X are based on, it used to be like Windows, I think eight, now it's like Windows 10. Yeah. The hardware is coded, it's the Southbridge, Northbridge, the proprietary designs, so they don't make drivers that work with Windows 10 for the, uh, the Xbox. It's based on that same kind of architecture. It is so heavily locked down that there's no way for us as mere mortals to do it. Now, if Microsoft wanted to, I feel very confident they could make this happen, but why would they? And why would they undercut PC sales with the Series X at $500 that racks everything at 1500 bucks? I will admit that I am the idiot who believed this one. Next slide, please. Are there Halo Easter eggs in all of the Xbox consoles? Can you tell me about this, Austin Evans? Yes, I can, because I think I was one of the first people to find these. So it began uh, in the Xbox One S. I believe it was on the fan shroud or the power supply or something, but there's a little Master Chief Easter egg there. I remember I was really excited because that was one of those first moments where we found something that was really exclusive and that no one had figured it out. And then it went viral with people just screenshotting my video and not Not editing. tagging you in it? Yeah. But yeah, the Series S and the Series X, and I actually have multiple things. So they actually put a lot of Easter eggs inside these consoles. I know because I open a lot of Xboxes, but actually this is not a myth. This is 100% confirmed. Microsoft are crafty little boogers. The next one is, does Nintendo create artificial scarcity for their consoles? Now you might walk down the street and see your local target out of Switch OLEDs, out of Switch lights, not selling the, the new 3DS XL, they should still make it. But the thing is, I don't believe that this myth is true. Now, it's, it's a complicated thing. It's, it's hard to say. Like, making and manufacturing consoles is difficult. And Nintendo are one of the very few companies who actually profit off of the sale of consoles. It is very difficult, especially with supply chains as they are now, to keep stuff like Switches in stock. Because, let's face it, people are absolutely still crazy about the Switch, even though it has been out for five years now. Yeah, it's, that's, that's absurd to me. People just really like the Switch and they're buying them up left and right. It's the number one selling console in the world. And you have to kind of keep into context, right? The, the Switch came after the Wii U, which was a historically horrible mm -hmm. flop that Nintendo really wishes that you would completely forget about. So it's understandable that they were a little bit sort of uh, slow on the Wii. And to be fair, uh, I don't know why Nintendo gets uh, singled out. Sony's no better. Microsoft's always slightly better. I mean, it's a hard business to decide. Are you going to make, you know, a hundred million dollars worth of PS5s or a hundred billion dollars? Yeah, especially when we're much. in a chip shortage. If they were artificially doing this, they would jack up the prices. To be fair, I think the Switch should be about 50 bucks less across the board, but that's just my opinion. I mean, a hundred million people disagree with you. I agree. 
that they disagree. But you know what we don't disagree with? We can all agree on our next myth. Does, Does Pikachu, Pikachu hate Sony? I, I was going to do that one, but no, 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 no. It's like, Hey You Pikachu was a game for the N64 where it had the microphone and you could talk to Pikachu. It was incredibly rudimentary, right? Even for its time, it was very limited. And the rumor was that if you said Sony or PlayStation, Pikachu would get mad. And to be fair, that did kind of happen sometimes. We also could say like the word like bread and Pikachu might get mad. Like it was, it was just so rudimentary. It, what it probably was was frustration from Pikachu not understanding what you're yeah, actually trying to yeah. say. Yeah, and in fact, later on, when the game was actually decompiled, it was found that there were no Sony or PlayStation. This just was not yeah. a real thing. They weren't even in his list of vocabulary. But you know what is? Which probably just frustrated this tiny little AI brain. You know what it was in his vocabulary? What? Our next myth. How Sega has killed its console business with the most expensive game of all time. Many people blame that Senmu was the reason that Dreamcast failed because it was so expensive and failed to break even. You know what really killed the Dreamcast? There's no type of like copy protection on any of the discs. Because they were so, like one gig CDs a, or something, It was just right? a one, yeah, it was just a base CD. Everyone I knew who had a Dreamcast had a massive collection. They never bought games for it. Yeah. Other thing was, specifically when it was related to Shenmue. So this was an expensive game for the time, right? And it was a very um, unique looking title. But the thing is, while it was expensive, the estimates kind of plotted maybe between like 45 to $70 yeah. million. Dollars. Shenmue was expensive, but the Dreamcast was doomed to failure far before this actually right. came out. The other thing was, there were other issues that sort of kept the Dreamcast from reaching its full potential because Nintendo and say and Sony were really starting to dominate the space. Sega had kind of been a little bit on the back foot really since the Saturn had failed to kind of take off. The Dreamcast had everything going against it and it inevitably crashed and burned and we got the Xbox. Did Atari make an ET game so bad that they buried millions of cartridges in the desert? When I hear the word gaming myth, this is, and I think will always be number one because this was an absolutely massive urban legend. So to set the stage, back in the early 80s, this was really the peak of home console gaming, right? So the Atari 2600 was huge and there were big, big dollars flowing around, but there was trouble looming because one of the issues with the Atari games was that they were turning quickly into shovelware. They were just literally shovelware. Anyone could develop anything for any system. There was no quality control. Anyone could make whatever the hell they wanted for these devices. So with shovelware on the rise and Atari getting incredibly punchy by doing things like creating 12 million copies of the Pac-Man game when they had only sold 10 million consoles, and then there was stuff like E.T., which was a huge movie tie-in. Atari was convinced that they were going to just make an absolute pile of money on it, and because of that, they forced a single guy to make the whole game in like five weeks, and it was terrible, widely regarded as one of the worst games of all time. So you've got the stage where Atari are making horrible financial decisions, printing more games than they have made consoles souls to play said games. So Atari in the dead of night took millions of games or at least hundreds of thousands of these unsold cartridges, dumped them in a landfill, never to be seen again. Now this seems so outrageous and ridiculous that it was not believed until 2014 in which for a documentary, they excavated at the site that it supposedly happened and they found the games. And in fact, I think actually a lot of them got like sort of authenticated and sold. I'd love to have one of these games because that'd be awesome to have in a collection. It's a wild story. For the longest time, this was along those si the lines of, you know, oh, my uncle at Nintendo told me X, whatever. So, like, I mean, the myth that they bur buried millions is is probably debunked. This is crazy to find out something such such a big urban legend. Over 20 years later. This would be along the same lines of, imagine if Plebeus turned out to be real that we found out, like, recently. Imagine. That would be crazy. Hello and welcome to This Is. Do you remember the lawless time of 2006? The internet was, was still pretty young at that time and it was just a lawless land pure lawless Are you just land. Be saying it's lawless because you kept downloading stuff on limewire that's true <laughs> but what we did is we went back in our time machine and we found the 10 best no the 10 best is not the word 10 of the consoles 10 of the fake consoles. So basically, when Photoshop became something that people could easily pirate, a way for people to create their own custom consoles, PCs, iPods, whatever. People wanted to make their own concepts and pass them off as real. So today, Kenzie has put together 10 of the consoles that we are going to be ranking. We're gonna do them blind. So Matt and I have not seen these yet. So we're going to have to pull out a console and rank it from one to 10, what we think is best, worst, and everything in the middle. So we don't, we don't know what we're gonna see first. Yeah. Wherever we rank them on a scale of one to 10 is where it stays. Let's see the first one. It is 
The Wii Phone. The Wii Phone. Have you ever wished your Sega Dreamcast was back from the dead, but also a Wii? Oh, and look at that. It's got Mario. <laughs> Well, it definitely like kind of gets the idea across that you know this is 2006, 2007 because this is obviously pretty like real smartphones. I actually don't hate. I this. don't hate it, but I do see some flaws in it. Okay, what's wrong with what's wrong One with the Wii phone? Is it's not very game. It's like a long Game Boy. I feel like if you were to hold it like you would a Game oh, Boy. Oh yeah, it's kind of high. You're, yeah, like it's really high. I want to rank this one kind of high. I actually like this as a concept. Also, though, I feel like putting your power button right next to where your head holes go is gonna hit something. This game, I wanna play conservative. Cause like, okay. I don't hate this. Yeah, but I what- I love it. I, and I, we don't know what's next. P4. Matt, that's inappropriate. Next up we have the PS4. Not the, to be confused with the actual PlayStation 4. Oh no, this oh, was the yeah. concept okay. PS4. There was a, t oh, I feel like a lot of these are gonna be a very specific theme of impossible transparent glass. We've got ourselves a flat console that has a clear controller on that transparent glass. You actually have like a screen and like touch buttons and stuff, which with, is quite nice. Connected and with glass tissue. So you could just imagine as you got absolutely wrecked in Tony Hawk that you would just snap that thing and shards of glass would fly in your face. I'm gonna rank this one kind of low in my opinion. I wanna say like, we're, we're I, down here. I would say this looks way better than the current PS5. When I think of like 2008 crazy renders, this is what I think about. Where are you at? Because I want to be I, in this zone. I, yeah, it's low. It's low. But do you Se think that it's seven, eight, nine? I say eight, like, we got nine? like we have to give ourselves some room. Like, do you think that's the dumbest thing that we're gonna see today? I'm gonna go eight. Eight. Next up, we have. <laughs> what is that? The Xbox 720 which is basically just the Omnitrix from Ben 10. I don't know what I'm looking at here and I don't like it. Do you remember when a lot of people thought that a lot of like computers were just gonna be like a gel based, <laughs> like slime brain? This has gotta be a 10, right? Or I'll give you maybe nine. This is I, way I want, worse like, than we're, we're, we're really early into this and I- Dude, what's gonna be worse than this? I feel like it's gonna be a nine. Okay, I'll give you nine, but I think this should be 10. Oof. I'm afraid if we leave one, two, three open for too long, we're gonna deeply regret what we have to put in those positions. Like this is gonna go downhill really okay, quick. But I'm also worried that if Wii Phone is number one. All see. right, next up we have a Wii P. Wait, wait, okay. With a holographic projector so, on it. So yeah, 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 it's basically a Wii with the Wii remote, but then you've got a holographic Pikachu. So a dumb thing that Nintendo would probably do. Yeah, this actually seems realistic, one of 10. What is it with a lot of future stuff where they like, they try and shove holograms? It looks like such like a shitty technology yeah. in the future. Like how is this better than just an actual video call that exists today? <laughs> Cause it's not cool. I want to see Darth Vader in 2D. I want to see him in 3D. I will also want to give this one low points because it's super lazy. Like at least these two are like, somewhat interesting and kind of like unique. This is just like a Wii with a projector on it. Do you think there's gonna be anything that's worse than this? Ooh. That's, okay. a, that's a real question. Lazy, ugly, it's gotta be 10. We're gonna just commit to it right now and hope that the rest of this game goes well. Okay. All right, next up we've got... <laughs> Wait, can we just flip everything no. now? No. Can we go 10 is best no. and one is worst? How would we write Conan? This is why this is why I like this game. So this is the PS3, which definitely just looks like some failed UFO. It's lumpy. Can I just say something? We're locked in right now. I feel like eight and nine for these was incredibly rough. Clearly, this is not good. Is there any redeeming factor of this PS3? Do you think, are there going to be a good one? Do you think there's actually going to be a good one on this list? Yeah, I guess we got to go with seven. Yeah, I, I mean, this is bad. I feel like the Xbox should have been higher because at least that one looked cool. I think the PS4 should have been higher now. Next up we have, oh, this is a good one. It's a good one. It's just the Apple console. They literally took an Xbox and then they rounded out the X's. Honestly, this is really good. I will have to mark, ding, ding them down slightly. I feel like the Apple logo is not straight. It is it's not. It's just not straight. Definitely top three for sure. This is, this is, I like this one. I do have to ding them one other point and that only has a single port for a controller. Again, this is because thematically correct. It, if you are playing with an iBox, you're alone. I would <laughs> vote for number two on this one. Two. I could vote one, but I think vote two just to keep our options open. I like that one a lot. Okay. Right? 
All right. Okay, now we gotta take a break here. We gotta like take a breather. Let's go really carefully at this point. Okay, because I don't want to. You're end the this one life. who's been so cavalier. No, 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 no. Yeah, I know. I made my mistakes. I'm learning you, from them. You came in like a wrecking ball. All right, we Next. have the G. Well, the disc inside of it is a 360, so at least have backwards compatibility. I like the little screen on top too. Like that's like neat. We got a uh, a real design thing because we got an X going with the stand, and then a circle. What's another word for circle? Squircle. 360. Oh. So, I'm afraid that number one is about to be something terrible and we're going to regret our decisions, Matt. That's the Matt. beauty of the game, my friend. Don't play the game if you can't have a bad number one. Okay, fine. Oh. Um, that one was one of the satisfying as the other ones. Ooh. We got... Oh, the PSP, PSP 2. Two. <laughs> what if the PSP had a smaller screen and looked stupider? Still better than the Q-Lite. <laughs> No, here's the thing though. It's so much chunkier though. And like, it's like taller, it's wider. It's more like shapely. I don't know why we're- What's metaphors. wrong with being shapely? Nothing, Matt. Yeah, that's what I thought. We do have dual analog sticks, but they're both the really crappy PSP like little nubbins. We're definitely not number do one. Do you think we could go worse than this? Cause it's, uh, it's five or six. Yeah, I agree it's five or six. But do you think, like, do you think that we can, that we're gonna go worse than this right now. No, you know what I'm thinking about is that number three should be number one right now, Matt. We're about to give something terrible to number one. I, I would say six, cause I don't love it. Yeah. Oh God. Okay. Oh, oh no, I don't All like right. this. I don't like All this. Right. This 50, is the- 50. Is I'll, it possible for a mulligan? Can we move one? No, 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 no. So one of my favorite things that we've started to do with, with tier list is that we have a lot of rules that make it more fun for deciding. There can only be one S tier and the other rule is that we have to have something in every other tier. We're only looking at this rank, uh, we're ranking this on looks alone. So I didn't want to do a tier list on this one. That's why I wanted to lay it out horizontally. This is fun. I like this. Two more. I'm so, why did we leave number one to the end now? We should fix something safe. Wait. Oh! Wait, wait, this is okay. Yeah, this, is, this okay. is our number one, baby. Xbox 360 Xbox. handheld. Actually, like a nice design. Like, it looks decent. It's not too chunky. Decent sized display. You've got all your buttons. It's probably a little bit unergonomic because all of your buttons are flat. Do you think the next one is going to be better than this? It, I not, almost not, think it's not only better than that, worse than these three. No, you know what? Let's, let's live dangerously. Let's live dangerously. That means. That whatever we get is our number one ranked console that never existed. Watch my face as I see it, okay? This is the number one console that never existed. Ready? Hey, Matt? Yeah? Did my face show off? No, it just dropped in disappointment. <laughs> Welcome, my friends, to a decade worth of fake console boiled down to the number one victor the Nintendo Revolution. <laughs> How about this? We make this 11. It's still one, but it's just one, one. So it just hides back here. here this is the- And that's our list. There you go. See, it's so just right there. It's right there. It looks like a melted N64. It looks like, a, like, like a stable diffusion render. Here's a, here's the best up thing. I could totally see Nintendo releasing this because they love to release <clears throat> up looking consoles. This was the revolution. So I assume that this is a concept of what the Wii was supposed to be. And boy, did they not get this right. Do we have to put this number one? No, 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 Matt, don't do it. Don't, oh. Uh, Bowser just like, he just rolled in his grave. He died after seeing this list and then rolled around in his grave. Okay, okay. Can we just say this is the canonical this is list? No, the, this would be should be number one. No, I, I actually I, think... No. This is my favorite. Number three is my favorite. You're wrong. It's your opinion that you're wrong about. Let us know in the comments below what you think about our tier list and which of these consoles would you actually want to have, have actually existed. This guy right here, I would actually buy an Xbox that looks like that. Like that's I legitimately still maintain cool. though that every single one of these looks better than a PS5. The PS5 is weirdly lumpy yet sharp. It's it's like, it's sharp lumps. You should get those checked out, man. Well, yeah. Hello and welcome to This Is. It's happened. We thought it wouldn't. We thought they'd hold out, but it finally happened. Xbox uh -huh. has let us down. How? Did they cancel the One S, Series S? Did they but make they Candy do. Crush a default <laughs> game on all Xbox platforms? They already did that with Windows, didn't they? Did they actually did that? Yeah. <laughs> so, no. Microsoft has announced that their first party titles, Halo, Forza, are going to get the price hike from $60 a game to $70 a game. When Sony made their, their Switch, they said, okay, PS5 games, 70 bucks. Yep. All right. Yep. And Xbox said, no, 
we're not going to do that. That was a great move. However, inflation comes for us all, which sucks because no one wants to spend $70 for a game. So <sighs> here we are. Like we're, we're seeing everything go up. We're seeing everything increase. We've seen consoles increase. This change will take effect starting next year. Yes. Going forward, you should expect to pay $70 for new first party Xbox games. And I'm assuming that's also going to be on non Xboxes, right? So if you want to play Forza on say yeah. Steam, they will probably jump the price up to yep. $70 there as well. Now there are a couple of things to talk about here. First and foremost is the most obvious uh, by Game Pass. Look, I think this, this is, that's what they're doing here. They want right. you to just sign up for Game Pass because Game Pass, as far as I know, not getting a price hike. It will be. Phil Spencer has said that it will happen eventually. Well, of course. I mean, everything right. goes up in price. Right. There's, you can expect price hikes on gas, on food, on other important staples like your Netflix life. subscription. Why is life so expensive? Obviously, Microsoft have an incentive here to sell more Game Pass subscription. Fair enough. And I'm fine with this. This makes, we've been talking about how Game Pass is the better value proposition. If you're on Xbox as your platform, nine, nine out of 10 players should just be on Game Pass. Well, especially if you consider you buy two $70 games right. in a year, that's covered your entire year of Game Pass, yep. right? Am I doing my math? Pretty much. Yeah. It depends like if you, you have to buy like the year up front, like yeah. it's 15 bucks a month if you go month to month. Sure. sure. But even like, even then it's, it's two and a half games. If you're one of the weird creatures that only plays Call of Duty and Madden, then you- Wait, did you say weird creatures when you described 50 to 60% of all gamers? The keyword there uh -huh. is only play Madden. Bro, I bet like, you most people who have a console play one to three games per year. You're gonna play Call of Duty, you're gonna play Madden, you're gonna I play I am the FIFA. casualist of gamer, and I go through you about play 20. Blooms. I play like the first like three levels of a game, I go, oh, this is too hard for me. <laughs> and then I never play it again, which is what happened with, El with uh, uh, Elden Ring. Obviously, every every Sony fanboy is gonna be like, <laughs> seventy dollars. What games are they charging on? They don't have any games. Uh, they, they they don't have a single game on that platform. That's not what Sony people sound like, but okay. Uh, <laughs> what does your Sony fanboy voice sound like? Boy, oh boy, I oh, love okay. PlayStations. PlayStations are the best. But I do think there's one thing to talk about here. Yeah. Which obviously inflation is a thing, right? And lots of things are going up in price. But think about the historical pricing of games. When I was but a wee lad wanting to buy a Game Boy game, they were about 30 bucks. 30 yep. bucks is standard. And I would say like PlayStation, like N64 games, I feel like PlayStation games are usually about $40, right? Like that kind of felt like where things roughly were. I remember 40, you started hitting like 50, I feel like in like the PS2 generation. And then ever since the Xbox 360 and PS3, $60 has pretty much been the standard for three whole generations. While Matt might have the fancy calculations on what the inflation is, I'm pretty sure the $60 game in 2005 is a whole lot more than $70 in 2023 money. So uh, I had Kinsey go and look for all these inflated prices. Can we do a little game here? I yeah. don't want to look yeah. at that. All right. Hit well, me with prices and I'll try to tell you what all, they were. I don't have all. I only have a couple of them. Okay. So just Hit like, me with it. Let me see if I can guess the inflation adjusted price in today's dollars. So an NES game in 1985. How much was it in $85? $45. Ooh. Okay. So 1985. There's a lot of inflation in the 80s. I'm going to say $100. It's $177. <laughs> People are paying $177 for Duck Hunt? <laughs> what? <laughs> it came with a gun. Look, uh, no wonder that uh, the video game industry was not doing good in the 80s. You wonder why game, uh, companies like Atari printed millions yeah. of copies. They're making bank! They can afford to put half their inventory in a landfill. They just made $13 trillion in today's money selling you E.T. Average N64 and PlayStation game. Just average. Oh, together. There, there was there were some discrepancies, yeah, but the average was... Forty nine ninety nine in 1995, 1996. Okay, I'm going to restate $100. Closer, it was $94.95. We pay 94 bucks for PlayStation 1 games. Yeah. United States Freedom Unit don't go as far as it used to. Back in my day, $40 would buy a whole PlayStation game. Now you get three Fortnite skins and a, an Apex Legend. Average Xbox game. So Xbox slash then, PS2 era, like yeah, 2000, what, two? 2001 we have on 2001, here. okay. The games were 50 bucks new? 49.99. 75. 84.17. <sighs> and then more. we have the average Xbox 360 game. 2005? 2005. 2005. $60. $60. $59.99 mm, if we're getting. Yeah. Okay, $60 in 2005 was... 
91.54. So basically, we've been paying $60 since 2005 for games. Yeah. But inflation adjusted, that used to be $91. And it's basically gotten progressively cheaper because every year inflation goes up and the price of games doesn't change. People don't feel that, you know? No, like, of course. It's, like, it's one of those things like. How much is gas in 2005? Right, yeah. Think like, about that. We feel gas inflation. Mm -hmm. We feel. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Can you. <laughs> Matt, Matt, I need you to do that one more time. So, Place no. it on gasoline prices. Go no. ahead, hit me. You, 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 yeah, you feel the, the prices of inflated gas. Yep. I said again. How about the price of vino? Is that <laughs> Games is a little different because, you know, like, oh, if, if they go up at like 10 bucks, it's like, oh man, we went up 10 bucks, but like, you don't feel it as much. You don't feel that, like, that creeping, like, spending power. Well, I think part of the reason is. The prices stayed the same for so long, yeah. right? Like you kind of got used to it. Now, if you think about it from the perspective of what's happened in gaming over the last, what, 15 years, DLC has become a massive part of it. In 2005, DLC didn't really exist, which like is why- a little bit, you know, like you well, know, a couple well, maps I mean, or like- That was the very beginnings yeah. of that, right? And you think, okay, $90 would fund a very expensive game. So what's happened since then is games have gotten wildly more expensive to develop, right? You know, the teams are bigger, the tools yeah. are, like, it's just so much more expensive, especially when you look at games like Elden Ring, which is like, what, 17 years and $400 trillion or whatever? Oh, it's very like, expensive, what, what, right? Uh, GTA 6 was billion, <laughs> billion dollar to develop? Yeah, There's no like, way they said how much they've spent on GTA 6. Really? GTA 6 is reportedly having a $2 billion budget. Boy, they need... Uh, Here's the thing. Here's, let, let's, I wanna, this is a side note. This has nothing to do with game monetization. They don't need to make a game for $2 billion. Okay. I would pay $60 uh -huh. to see $2 billion. They could just have a room set up. <laughs> <laughs> and I would just, I would pay money to see that much money. So games are costing more and more to develop all the time. Only, in my opinion, the only reason why we've only been paying $60 for games for so long is because things like DLC, things like deluxe editions, things that will give you added value have come onto the scene, which has really well, kind of helped. Like because if all you're, the microtransactions and 100%. everything like that, which everyone hates, by well, the way. Like, you know, you say that. I bet, look, else everyone, just come close. Let's all be honest with ourselves. Have you ever spent 90, $100 on a game you really like? Just think about it. Between maybe buying FIFA packs, maybe buying additional cars in Gran Turismo, maybe playing balloons for way too many hours and buying too many balloon coins get, or whatever. How do I get all my heroes? We all have spent that kind of money, but there's a difference because nowadays it's sort of split between free to play games, which have lots and lots of microtransactions and 60 and $70 games, which have lots of microtransactions, but maybe will actually yeah. give you like, you know, DLC, maps, like other like actual tangible things for that cash. But most people, if it's a game you really like, are probably spending more than 60 bucks anyway. One of the problems is we could say, oh yeah, well, they this has been so cheap mm -hmm. for, you know, years of it's been $60 for games. Yeah. It's not like they'd be like, okay, you know what? We're charging an extra 10 bucks, you know, for this game. Yeah. Because of that, we're gonna take, we're gonna, we're, we're gonna we're gonna cut off these microtransactions. That's not happening. In the context of things, going from sixty to seventy dollars isn't that bad. Is sort of my thought on it. When you consider again the quality of games right. and the fact that if you really like the game, you're probably gonna spend a little bit of extra money on it anyway. And also Game Pass. You know exists. what I think though is it's egregious. Kind of okay. okay, yeah, hit me. Is some of the collector's editions yeah. that we're selling because it used to be you buy a collector's edition and it'd be like, oh, here's this merchandise, art books, that, that steel steel yeah, books. Yeah, that merchandise might be moldy and filled with spores. You can see what I'm talking about right here. But you got something tangible. Now we're getting all these like super editions that are like crazy crazy more money and it's just all in game wait are you trying to say that me buying the super deluxe version of grand Turismo to get millions of dollars of in-game credit and some extra cars was a bad idea i would never ever pay to win i mean pay to have more money so uh, <clears throat> he's got nba 2k 23 up here yeah so ps4 is 60 bucks ps5 is 70 bucks. which which is here's the thing this is where like nba 2k kind of rubs people the wrong way a little bit too because it is two separate editions i get it, if you have a ps4 you want to spend less money but if you buy the ps4 version and then get a ps5 version like ps5 mm -hmm. later you still play in the yeah PS4 i would version. say sony so, feels like the playstation side seems worse if you want to have both versions mm -hmm. uh in one purchase you have to buy the digital deluxe edition which comes with both versions yeah but then you can also get for a hundred dollars the Jordan edition, oh, yeah, which that. means nothing because what? I'm gonna get 
uh, Michael Jordan in my game, right? You get uh, 100 VC and 23 team promo packs. That's a lot of it's packs. It's a booster box. Oh, you do get the Gi Diamond Jordan shoe. This is a great point. We also totally forgot. These are all the same prices for digital and physical games. Yeah. And obviously everything's going digital. So they also have saved money by not actually yep. having to create, you know, obviously. We've been talking about make, that for years. I know. They've been trying to yeah. like move on from, you know, you had cartridges, then you had discs. Then like the disc comes in like literally the most generic little plastic box that has no anything. Now it's not even the disc. You're still paying the same amount. Coming back around, the value proposition for the Xbox game is still just pushing towards Game Pass. Oh, and course, yeah. like again, it just makes Game Pass look that much more appealing. Sure. And when we think about all the things we're getting with Game Pass, you're getting your Xbox Live Gold. You're getting cloud gaming if you want it. Mm -hmm. That's not a whatever. It's, if you want it, there's lots of stuff that's it. included. If you yeah. get is uh, PC Game Pass Ultimate, the, like, like all the first party yeah. games that they're doing are day one yes. available on Game Pass. Yeah. So can I be honest with you about my current generation gaming habits? So between Xbox and PlayStation, I own. No physical games for my PS5. Like I'm not, I, I I've not purchased don't. a single physical the PS5. The only disc. physical game that I own yep. at the moment yep. is Spider-Man for PS4. Yeah. Because I bought the the PS, the, the limited Pro. edition and it came with it. I own a fair few digital copies of PS5 games. I own zero first party Microsoft games because I have them all on Game Pass. Yeah. I have not purchased any of them whatsoever in like five years six years i'm fully on that game pass train because it's like even if i'm only going to play a couple games a year it's already worth it right so to me it's like i get it it's more expensive that's never a good thing but when you consider the historical sort of context here of how much cheaper games are today even at 70 bucks than they were in 2005 2006 when we were purchasing them for 60 bucks each which was like 90 dollars in today's money and you consider that you have the ability to download these easily with things like game pass obviously playstation plus ultra 5k edition will give you some games for free and including your subscription but like now, we've got it good today i think it's worth just kind of keeping in mind it's easy to complain it's easy to be bloated but it's pretty good let's put a big old asterisk next to everything you just said what do you mean? because here's what we had we have like we're talking about like we love game pass we love it full disclosure you know, we have been sponsored by game pass in the past but that also doesn't change the fact that it's a good service yeah really good service yeah. but you know what we also used to love Wait, we used to love netflix Oh. Netflix used to be, oh, I can have whatever movie I want for a mere small month-to-month -month cost. I want to break down Netflix pricing in the past in the past 11 years. For context, I've been a subscriber of Netflix since like 2012 or I've something. Been, I've been a subscriber of streaming since day one. 2011 it, Netflix. Go. Eight bucks a month. That is the standard HD plan with yep. two screens. Yep. Now is 15.49. So it's basically double the last in price. Years. Yeah. All this content that's on all these other streaming platforms it was is on Netflix. Ne it was on Netflix. Mm -hmm. If you wanted The Office, Netflix. If you wanted Parks and Rec. Netflix. Now we have in 2013. Mm -hmm. That's when they introduced the 4K premium one. I remember. I which signed remember up for that. gives you no additional content. It's twenty dollars a month. Oh, that's a lot. That's a lot. I mean, I so do like, for it, you know, like I like 4K. I do too. Would you watch This Is in HD? <laughs> you're doing it right now. <laughs> Check your. Make sure you're on 4K. Make sure you're on 4K. We're recording in 4K. Use 4K. You guys see every beard hair in Matt's face? You'll see it in crystal clear 4K for only $12.99 a month when you sign up for the This Is Monthly Subscription Plan. You can watch our videos in 4K if you give us money, even though you can do it for free, but give us money. The takeaway from this is what happens in, you know, a few years when Game Pass starts creeping up and they say, okay, well, I'll play your favorite games at 30 FPS for, for $15 a month, or you can pay $30 a month to play at 60 plus. Matt, I might vomit. Hello and welcome to This Is. This might be one of our most controversial videos that we will do. What we're gonna do right now is we're gonna go through all the generations of gaming consoles and we're gonna rank them on our tier list. I didn't want to smack this because it's a little, little fragile. I'm so afraid because ranking something as massive as an entire generation of gaming. Imagine yeah. when we put one of these in F tier. There's gonna be we're gonna put like a decade worth of gaming in this is, yeah, this is where it gets challenging. There's some goods in a generation. There's some bad. We got to try and weigh those. We can't say something's so great because of one thing. Yeah. We got to talk about the bad for it, too. I hate the fact that I have to go first. All right. So I've got the this is the sixth generation. The Sega Dreamcast, the PS2, the GameCube, the original Xbox, the Game Boy Advance, the Wonder Swan. Clearly an S tier console if I've ever seen one. I got to be honest with you. 
I don't want like it's. I know we said we were gonna do this random. I think that might be my S tier. For me, what makes it an S is Game Boy Advance and the OG Xbox. Really? I loved the OG Xbox. Okay. I loved watching Bill Gates come out there and just like, oh, gaming. And then the rock is there sitting like gaming. Every generation is gonna have its hits and its misses. I will say there's some real arguments to be said that this is one of the best generations of gaming of all time. The PS2, GameCube, I will say, had some terrific titles. The GameCube was, out of all of these consoles, or at least out of all the home consoles, that was the one that I played the most. I don't think the, the original Xbox was better than the PS2, but- But there were some amazing times on yeah, that. Like yeah, like Halo like, and Xbox For me, Live. it was the most, like, it was, it was a new console that was so crazy to me at the time. And I was like younger, oh. I have bigger memories attached to the, the original Xbox than I do the PS2. And obviously we had the Dreamcast, which clearly did not <laughs> succeed. I don't think this is S tier though. I'm gonna say what? that. What? Purely because it was a little bit of a middle ground of a generation. How about this, Matt? Are you vetoing my veto? How about this? I won't veto anything, but there can only be one of these that land in S tier. If you are gonna make the argument that sixth gen, PS2, Dreamcast, Xbox is the greatest generation of gaming of all time. You can make that argument, but you have to put that in S tier. And that means that nothing else in this video could be S tier. And we're gonna be arguing like crazy for the rest of it. Do you feel that strongly about the sixth gen that it is S tier? Cause I will say, I feel this is a strong A tier. I could easily accept this being A tier. I'll give you A tier, but you're not gonna like my next answer. Almost. I'm putting it A tier, but I'm, I want it on record. Okay. That I don't, I don't love this. Now that we've started out with a disastrously difficult pick that no one is going to be happy I, with. I, I feel good. Like I, 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 I can feel you guys yelling at us in the comments already. All right, we're going to go. Woo the third gen, which starts in 1983, and that is the NES, the Sega Master System, and the Atari 7800. Nostalgia-wise, I will be honest, this was not a generation that I really partook in. I was not alive in 1983. <laughs> I wasn't alive in 1983 either, but I did partake in this generation. I never played NES until later on, so I'm gonna purely look at this from the historical sort of context. And keep in mind that this was when gaming had this huge peak, an absolute implosion. And I, there's a real argument to be had that if Nintendo had not stepped up with the NES and really sort of revitalized the home console business and gaming as a whole, that gaming may not have picked up for years and years and years after the fact. This set the groundwork for what home consoles could and should be. It had absolutely unbelievable titles such as Zelda, such as Mario. I'm not gonna say that this is S tier, I'm not, I'm, cause I just, I personally can't put this in S tier, but I will be completely honest with you. If you made a sincere argument that this should be S tier purely based on the historical context, I could actually say that is pretty damn important. But the cultural relevancy to me matters very little compared to my nostalgia glasses. While I did partake heavily into this uh, generation, I am gonna choose violence. I don't give a shit about Mario. I'm not gonna say F, but I am gonna say a solid C. I'm not gonna argue with you because I was pretty firm on the A tier for this one. So like, I'll give you C but on this, but like, holy, wow. Okay, I'm gonna pick this next one. I'll pick this next one. <laughs> I told you it was gonna be controversial. All right. The eighth generation of gaming featuring such amazing consoles such as the Wii U, PS4, Xbox One, 3DS, Vita, and the good old Nintendo Switcheroo. A generation which I think because it is so new has a lot of recency bias, either pro or against it. Because on one side you can say that an enormous amount of people who are watching this video spent a huge amount of time in the last 10 years playing consoles from this generation and probably have either rose tinted glasses about those early, you know, PS4 days, and Xbox One days, or it's so new that it hasn't really settled in. I'm much more in that second camp. This could honestly go, in my opinion, up here or way down here based on I your think charitable. the Wii U brings that entire list down so like do. a ninth grade pothead. But the, hey, how does the fact that we put the Switch in the Wii U in the same generation? If this was a tier of just the Switch, I say Switch is A tier. The main thing for me is, is that this is the first generation of gaming that I covered professionally from start to finish. I was there at E3 when they announced the PS4 and the Xbox One. You know, I got my hands on the 3DS when it first came out and the Vita, like every single one of these consoles I covered on the channel. But I can put that to the side for a second and say that like for this generation, we should almost argue it from the perspective of this is F tier and how do we elevate it above F tier? Xbox are still paying off the 
reputational debt that the Xbox One flushed down so the how, toilet. So how much does ago. how much does PS4 and Switch negate that for us? It brings it above F. But I mean, I there's an argument that this is D tier, which I I am shocked to say out loud. I almost think I'm leaning toward D tier on this. I I'll tell you what I want it. <laughs> what do you want to do? No, 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 no. Do not rip it. Do not rip that beautiful graphic. Okay, we're just gonna just put it. Wii U was just so bad. And everyone's like, I love my Wii U. Or did you just like playing Mario Party with your friends? How do you feel about her decision so far? I feel like I regret doing this video at all. <laughs> Matt, we have to be brave. We have to push through. We have to give the people what they want, which is our L takes on their <laughs> childhood memories. I'm gonna add a, a new rule to this game. Okay. There can only be one S, but we have to fill up the entire... I 100% with you. So with you. We, we have to put a we B have to find a B and, an F. and we have to find an F. I already know which console generation I think I want to set as an F. And I think I, uh, there's two in my head that could be S. So I think we'll have to argue with that a little bit. Let's commit to the time on tradition of tier list. First and second gen of consoles, which we are going to wrap up together. So this is the Atari 2600, yep. the Mattel uh, Intellivision, yep. the ColecoVision, yep. the Fairchild, <laughs> the original Atari Pong. Boop, boop, boop. Boop. This is obviously the S tier. So. Wait. How do you not put this wait, in S? What are you name talking about? Name one thing that's better than this, the Click Hotel. The third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, and ninth generation of gaming are better than this. Look, I, this was mind blowing when it came out. This is prehistoric tech, though, by today's standards. Right. Pong boops the we can bop later on. But, like, I also was able to play a lot of those games at the arcade. Mm -hmm. I have more fun, nostalgic memories of playing some of these games at an arcade than I do sitting at home oh, with Oh, so you. you're actually saying that the fact that arcades like, existed is a downside here. Yeah. But like, this is a pale imitation of arcade gaming, and therefore console gaming didn't really hit its stride until later. All right. We're going to say first and second generation combined are F tier on our list, which <laughs> means that we have four more generations to go. And I've got, again, I've got two generations here that are very much a go debate ahead. in my mind. Go ahead and pick one. <sighs> Not a good one to pick. No, you shouldn't have picked that one. Uh, this is the ninth generation, aka the current generation of gaming. So we're talking PS5, Xbox Series X, as well as the Steam Deck. I will say up front, this is the most difficult generation to judge. Just because we're, I would say, what, a quarter, maybe a third of the way through the generation. Like, we're going to be living with the Series X, the Series S, the PS5, and partially the Steam Deck for many years to come. This is where I would cancel myself. You can try. I give this... A C tier. I completely, absolutely agree. Oh! Like we're two years into the the uh, console generation, and people are just now starting to get PlayStations. There's been a severe lack of any type of exclusive. And it doesn't really the, enable anything new. Right. It's slightly better than what we had before. The, but like you said, like nothing is like groundbreaking. It took so long to catch up to, you know, to just to get into this place. Yeah. And we're a large chunk of the generation. If already we over. make this video again in like. Three years. Oh, we will, by the way. We're going to uh, make this about subscribe once Subscribe, and uh, three years from now, you'll be reminded with a ring -a ling of the ding-a-ling that we made another one of these tier lists. I think that this could either go one or two ways. I think it could go significantly higher based on like what the next Switch does, if there is like slim and pro consoles and some of that stuff. By the same token, if we don't see anything that's all that revolutionary, if we basically just see like more mobile stuff and nonsense, this one could slide precipitously. Mm. Go ahead, pick one. I don't, I don't want to pick anyone, another one. Yeah. Don't do that one. Boom. Mm. The fourth generation of gaming devices. We're talking Super Nintendo, Sega Genesis, Neo Geo, Turbo Graphics, and importantly, the handhelds, which really kicked off this generation, including both the Game Gear and importantly, the good old Game Boy. In my opinion, this is when gaming got much more serious. The idea of a console war really was sort of uh, invented in this generation. I just, like, yeah, like the Game Boy versus Game Gear. That battle was intense. Mortal Kombat alone of just like, yeah. come buy a Sega because we can do blood. I'll be clear, this is my S tier. So the Game Boy was my not whole goddamn life. I got my Game Boy in 1992. Yeah. I still have that Game Boy sitting like in my living room right now. There's no other generation for me that I had more of these consoles. I had a Genesis. I had an SNES. Just the generation that you happen to grow up with the yes. most and yes. maybe not the most influential. I'm yes. not saying it's not a good generation. No. I think it's we're, a very good generation. I, I already said, I don't give a shit about the, the historical value of it. I hear you. I you really don't do hear, hear me. you. You don't hear me. This is not an S tier generation. It's the, it's the S's of S. We have to agree on this, Matt. I can't give you S on this. I can give you A. Oh. 
all the Spider-Man games for SNES, okay? Those were S tier on their own. Road Rash on the Sega Genesis. Awesome. Mortal Kombat. Echo the Dolphin game. All right? This is a good generation. I'm not going to give it our only S of the video. How about this? I'll give it a upper A. We put the uh, third generation with the NES at C tier. This was a slightly better generation. It was not that much of a better generation. Like you just cannot tell me that that. I is... can, I can. Look at my straight face. Okay, Matt, you can pick the next one then. Um, doesn't matter if both F. <laughs> well, actually technically one has to be S and one has to be B because I played the game correctly. <laughs> Checkmate. It is the S tier. No, the I... S tier of S tier. You know, no, it's not. It's not. This is where, like I said, we're going to break up. We're going to break up here. It's so forgettable to me that I skipped this generation. This generation had some of the most important consoles of all time. The Who Xbox cares? 360. Who cares? The PlayStation 3. The Wii. We've got ourselves the DS in this generation. We've got ourselves the PSP in this generation. I would say that this is the generation out of every single generation we talked about. There are no goddamn misses in this generation. We've got the DS, which absolutely crushed the Game Boy in popularity. So 100 gajillion units is still probably the most best-selling consoles of all time. We've got ourselves the PSP, which was so powerful, so badass. You had a PS2 in your damn pocket. You had yourself the Xbox 360, the PS3, the ultimate console generation. This was the peak of gaming. It will never be touched again. And I will stand on the damn table. Don't give me this as an S. I'm not giving you it as an S. This is S tier. You know it's S tier. It's so S tier. Incredibly S tier. There's literally zero misses on this list. Every other one of these console generations has something that drives them. The PSP. People love it because they were able to hack it and homebrew it because Sony doesn't know how to. No, because it offer. was a PS2 to fit in your damn pocket, Matt. They just want to play their JRPGs. Everything about this generation was. Golden, amazing, perfect. The controllers got good. Wireless controllers. I'll give you an A. Standard. I won't give you an S. So let's put this down for one second. Let's talk mm. about fifth gen. Because clearly, one of these has to be B tier. One of these I, has to I be S tier. Fifth. fifth generation, starting in 1993, includes such classics like the Sega Saturn, PlayStation, N64, Game Boy Color, and Atari Jaguar. The best two were saved for last, in my opinion. These what? are the best two generations of gaming. The PlayStation 1 and the Game Boy Color, the two of those combined, that was like the mid-late 90s, like Austin Happy Zone. I just absolutely played so much Pokemon on the Game Boy Color. Crisis! I didn't like Crisis that much. I did have those- Half-Life! So you're really making the point then that the seventh gen has to go in B. How about S, S tier? No, yeah, no, like that. you like can't that. have your cake and eat it too. Otherwise you end up looking like me, all right? I'm this not gonna sleep tonight. I'm not gonna sleep tonight knowing that this is what we come down to and this is the bullshit I just answer we have to come. Oh, he's, he's, he's. I was gonna take it home. Well, you can take it home. What do you mean you can take it home? I like the kid who's mad that he just like knocked take my ball home. home. I'll be the bigger man, all right? I don't believe you. Be the bigger man, which means we have to put the fifth, the fifth gen here. Oh my God! Look at that bear over there. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Well, where's the bear? Thank you so much bear. for watching this episode of This Is. Let us know what your tier rank uh, ranking is. Definitely, is, this was the definitive, absolute, no arguments here from anyone. Hello and welcome to This Is. Today we're here at our fine sponsor, Micro Center, where we are going to be ranking every PlayStation ever on a tier list. You might ask yourself, why would you do that? Because we like because arguing. we want to look at the best, the worst, the mediumist, the mid. So let's start out with the PlayStation 5 Slim. Okay, I didn't actually mean to grab that first. <laughs> so the PS5 Slim just came out uh, literally like a week or two ago. Yeah. And it is, uh, to borrow a phrase from this young hip kid over here, the mediumist of medium. There's nothing wrong with this slim. The problem is, is that it's not great. Out of all like the slim versions of the PlayStation, this has got to be the worst, right? PS4 slim was better than this. PS3 slim was better than this. Lackluster. I think it's a better word than worse. We can D. go. D. D. Okay. So for our eagle eye viewers, you might notice we've already done this tier list. I'm probably going to completely contradict all of my opinions on that, but maybe not. Well, I'm not going to contradict mine on... <laughs> PS3 Slim. 
All right. If you can cast your mind back to the year 2009, the mm. PS3 was in a little bit of a rough place. The fat PS3, while it wasn't quite as unreliable as the 360, still had some real issues and importantly was still enormously expensive. So the PS3 Slim came along, knocked the price down significantly, but also this has zero PS2 backwards compatibility at all, right? But it was so much cheaper. It was so much more reliable. I would argue that the PS3 Slim is kind of still a good version of the PS3, yeah. even all these years later. I would say fairly high. Maybe not like, certainly not like S or something, but like, I would say like B? Yeah. Uh, you know what? All right. It was I, good. I, I, it was good. Like, I can't argue with you on that one. You know what? I can tell you. Yeah. They'll actually solidify my thoughts on this matter. You know, when we talk about a slim console, what's the point of a slim console? What's to save some money? To have a great gaming experience. And you know how you can save some money, have a great gaming experience? By visiting your friendly local micro center. There's so many amazing deals, especially this time of year. And on top of that, they have some incredibly cool new deals on racing simulator gear, which we may or may not be here this morning picking up some for main channel videos. So subscribe to the Austin Evans channel. You can get yourself a huge variety of racing simulator setups, including some bundles, the premium bundle, which we got a smooth $690 discount on. You can visit micro center to find all kinds of racing simulator setups and even affordable ones too. If you don't want to build yourself a literal digital car on wheels. I think of PlayStations, <laughs> I couldn't help but talk about our lovely sponsor, Micro Center, which of course the links will be in the description. You know, it wasn't a good deal, which is gonna, I don't know if this is actually, is or not. <laughs> you don't even know what you're looking at. The PS4 Slim. I would say that PS4 Slim was a pretty minor upgrade because this kind of got lost in the shuffle because this was announced around the same time as the PS4 Pro. So if the PS4 Pro never existed, I think that would actually be a benefit to the Slim. But if yeah. we're ranking this on like the importance and like the viability Ooh. of it long term and like kind of what it did, the PS4 Slim was a pretty weak sauce upgrade. I would say C. I, C? Yeah. Uh, yeah, all right. Three, uh, four, five. I will give it C, and I won't go lower just because, like, the price on it ended up being pretty good. All right. You want to pick a next one? I would love to. We've got, oh, okay, the fat PS3s. I would argue that the PS3, the fat PS3, was the most ambitious console of all time. The cell processor, the NVIDIA graphics, which were kind of mid, the fact that they brought Blu-ray. There was so much the PS3 did. Mm -hmm. And I will argue the PS3 was the biggest leap going from PS2 to PS3, as far as like the technical specifications and everything that we have ever seen and we will ever see. But then they died a lot and they were really expensive. And they kind of got worse over time because they removed like PS2 backwards compatibility yep. hardware wise and they removed it software wise. Yep. One rule that we usually have is yeah. we can only have one S tier. Agreed. Because it cheapens it if they're all S tier. Are you saying that this is better than any no. other PlayStation? I, ca I can't, I can't honestly say I, it's S tier. I would say A tier. Yeah. Like I would not argue with you a little bit. When people are looking for PS3 nowadays, they are looking for this one. They're yeah. not looking for a slim. True. They're not looking for a super slim. Yeah. They're looking for this model right here. And I think that is worth an eight here. Okay, I'm glad we agree on that. I actually thought you were gonna fight me on it. Do you <laughs> want to pick the next one? All right. Can you not pick another PS3? That's what I'm trying. I feel like to. we've done all of the like 2010 models. PSP. I loved my PSP. Same. And then I broke it. It was the first time my family got a high definition TV. Ooh, fancy. I, we had to put the seat down in the back of <gasps> my car and I crushed it in the seat oh, and it no. broke the door and it never oh, worked again. No. Okay, can I give you some points why the PSP was great? It was, it was. First of all, Sony's first handheld console. Yeah. So they came out swinging. This thing was way more powerful than the DS. Look at like Call of Duty on the DS versus what you could run on the PSP. Like it was a night and day difference. It was certainly flawed in the fact that it only had one really crappy analog stick. That was honestly the biggest downside to it. Mm -hmm. And much like some of the other consoles we're talking about here, later PSP models literally just got worse. Sony had like a history of giving a big middle finger to mm -hmm. when it came to media, like the memory stick duos, which were like triple the price of anything else yeah. and proprietary. Yeah. The PSP was both because it used the memory, the memory stick duos and, UMDs. and, and the UMDs. I'm going B with how bad it got later on. I know a lot of people are like, oh man, these are so good. Like, look how much I can homebroom this and like the Vita, whatever. If you have to jailbreak something to make it good, that doesn't mean it's good. Whoa, that's a quote. Could we put that a shirt? I feel bad though. Does, does, does a PSP really only be like, I feel I like- I think it is. Okay, all right. <laughs> Matt, would you like to go next? I, I, I just went. Okay. He's really good at the this. The PS4 Pro. I think this is a, an interesting one because this was the first time that we had really seen a proper pro console. If we cast our mind back to the PS4, 
came out in 2013. It was a decent console, but it was a little bit of a weak upgrade in my opinion. It was very conservative. There was a lot of room for Sony to push the envelope. And with the GPU on this, they were able to actually hit 4K sort of specs on a lot of games, or at least do some upscaling to get there with some checkerboard renderings. And also I'll give them the fact that the PS4 Pro launched at $400, the same price as the original PS4 was only a few years before. I will give that one an A. Wait, wait, really? I was gonna say B actually. Whoa, no, PS4 Pro whoa. is pretty good, it's not that good. Cause you could go and get a PS4 Pro today and it will serve you for a lot of games. That is, that is now, true. Uh, PS4 Pro for the people. Yeah, okay. A. The PS2. If we do not put this in S tier, people will be Angie. I'm gonna I'm gonna jump I'm gonna jump ahead. Okay. Because my argument for, for S tier PS2 slim. <laughs> PS2 is amazing. I don't think anyone can argue that. Yeah. Name a better looking console. The PS2 Slim was, was gorgeous. Yes. What you lost was the ability to do the hard drive, which okay, I guess if you're a Final Fantasy fan. That sucks. No one likes Final Fantasy. That's not a real game. But look at PS1 games, and now look at PS2 games. That jump in graphics was a singular moment in time. The PS2 also did bring online play. Mm -hmm. It also kept flawless backwards compatibility with PS1, including memory cards, controllers, yep. everything. And to top it off, PS2 remains one of the best-selling game consoles of all time. Yep. They're making PS2 games in like 2012 or whatever. They just took they what did... was a phenomenal console and made, made it, it smaller. better. I'm going to do something we've never done before. Okay. I'm pretty firm on this S tier. All right. I'll give you S tier. Oh, no. Wait, 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 wait. What am I, what am I giving up? You're, I'll give you S tier. We're going to do something we've never done before. Oh, my God. You're going to try to put them both in S tier, aren't you? We'll just go ahead and do that. Yeah, as long as the PS2 is in actual S tier, and then the PS2 Slim is in lowercase S tier. What? That's no, fine. it's above. It's because it's so, <laughs> it's so small that it can sit on top of it easily. So now that we have established the S tier, it's time for the gloves to come off. All right. The PlayStation. Where would we be without the PlayStation? We would well, be talking about Xboxes right now. No, we would be talking about Nintendos. The original PlayStation 1 did have a lot going for it because it was not only the first proper Sony console, but the PlayStation delivered proper 3D performance, the amount of consoles they sold, the amount of games that came out for this device. I would argue, while it's no S tier, it was, it was, it was good A tier, right? How could this not be A tier? Well, no, I gave you S tier because the real A tier comes from its predecessor. What? The Nintendo PlayStation. That's not a real thing. Where would we be without the Nintendo PlayStation? So the Nintendo PlayStation was a collaboration between Sony and Nintendo to add a CD drive to the NES. So I'll give you B tier for, for the PlayStation. Are you trying to tell me that this prototype that never saw the light of day deserves A tier? We're gonna put this above. What are you talking? You're breaking the rules, Matt. None of this exists without big boy up here. So are you just trying to say that the, the next tier list, we should put the first multi-celled organism is S tier? Cause without that, no one would have made a game console. Like what? What are you doing over here, man? Like, come on. I can't argue with your logic. <laughs> That's out of here. <laughs> PlayStation A tier. You pick then. All right, I'm gonna pick. The PlayStation Pocket. Okay, so this is a weird one. So this is kind yeah. of like the Dreamcast memory cards that had a little screen. You could play a little like Tamagotchi style games on it, but it also functioned as a quasi memory card. The problem was that like it only shipped in Japan. I don't even know how much support it really had. Someone looked at Dreamcast and said, hey, what if we did everything they're doing just worse? And that's and that was the PS Pocket. We need an F. You know, actually this is worse than PS5 Slim, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, this is gonna be like that one guy's like, um, the P the PS Pocket saved my grandpa from mm -hmm. his grand personal save a wolf and yep. mm -hmm. we've had we've passed it down our family from generations does PS Vita the duality of man was in full force for the PS Vita because on one hand it was everything we loved about the PSP cranked up to 11. Dual analog sticks which everyone wanted significantly more powerful still supported PSP games however it was too conservative because Sony basically said oh we'll make the PSP 2 and everyone had moved on to smartphones and Nintendo had Mario and Pokemon and everything to keep people on the 3DS. Whereas the Vita never really found its footing and sort of fizzled slowly out 
ever besides Japan. And even then, I don't think it was tremendously successful. It's, a, it's just primarily just a JRPG machine. I mean, there's a lot of tech in this thing. It, but yeah, but like, it can't just be, because it has a lot of tech doesn't mean it was well executed, it is my point. Like, the problem is, is that we kind of screwed ourselves because we put PSP in B, and this is worse than the PSP. Even though it was objectively a better console, I think it's C. It makes me sad to say, but mostly because it failed and Sony stopped making handhelds because this didn't work. Well. What are you talking about? There's no other, what? What if we just did this? I randomly picked this one up without looking. <laughs> so here we have why we decided to, to do this tier list again. And that's because we have the PlayStation portal. Matt, can you actually turn that on and play a game for me real quick? I just want to show the audience what it looks like. Can you just play some uh, portal real quick? No internet connection. Oh, wow. It's almost like this is a really, really dumb console. This is, if you took your phone, duct taped, a dual sense to the side and only had the remote play app on it. Like that's what all this thing does. It is literally useless without an internet connection and your personal PS5 online. I know you've been hard against it. I'm like somewhere in the fence with it. I do think this is again, the it's most medium thing ever. Another thing is because it has uses. I'm not a huge fan of cloud streaming and remote play and all these things. And even with remote play, which again is literally my PS5 is on the same Wi-Fi network. Even then, while it's a decent experience, I still see frame drops. If you want it as an accessory, you should live your best life. I'm not going to judge you, but the portal is so weird. I'm a little bit more defendant of it, but I will give you F. I don't recommend F a whole minus. lot of people buy this. We have a lot more items left. You know what? PS3 Super Slim. F tier, yeah. F tier. It's time to I, go to the F tier. It's real. It's not so bad. Good. The Super Slim was like, hey, you know what? What if we take the Slim and make it out of the cheapest plastic ever? Get rid of the slot loading disk drive. In the door, you like kind of pushed it open. It felt like such a gross like mechanism. Like crunches. It is F. like, yeah. It's, we don't need to talk about. It. Okay, all right. We're just gonna move on. Give me something good, Matt. <laughs> so this was a premium PS2 only sold in Japan. It was like something like a thousand dollars. It was like absurdly expensive. Stupid. Essentially what it was, essentially a PS2 with a hard drive, a TV tuner, and a DVD burner. So this is essentially meant to be like your home console everything box. This was way ahead of its time, but it was so expensive. It was. And also it ultimately was not very successful because at that point you probably buy a PS2 for like a third or a quarter of the price, or whatever. And unfortunately, as we found out recently, when we actually bought one of these for a video, most of these have crumbled through the eras. I would say D. D, I'll give you D. D? Like, if it was, like, 200 bucks cheaper. Next up, we have the PlayStation TV. This PS TV, as the cool kids call it, was essentially a non-portable Vita. So imagine taking all the guts from a PlayStation Vita, putting a little set-top style box, and calling it a day. It also was really cheap. These things were $100. It fixed a lot of things with the Vita. Yeah, it did. But it was still uh, kind of limited. It, I, D. I like it, but like, I look uh, yeah, at this. It, it, it was worse than the Vita. It was, but it, well, but it wasn't because it was so cheap. The problem was but there were not a lot of games. dollars No, but there weren't a lot of games for any of these things was the problem. Like, you're buying this thing to play PSP games. All right. Speaking of a JRPG machine. Go ahead. The PS4. PS4 is complicated because PS4 was the first generation of consoles that I covered professionally from start to finish. I certainly have some fond memories of like, you know, being at E3 as they announced this thing and everything, but it was a very conservative console, right? Judging by the fact that they had to make a pro version just three years later. PS4 still holds up okay today. It certainly was like the basis of all of this generation of gaming. The problem was, was that the hard drives were slow. It did not have a huge amount of GPU horsepower, had a terrible CPU. It just felt like Sony spent all this money and kind of had a bit of a disaster with the PS3. So PS4 rolled around, they go, oh, let's just make like a really safe, 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 safe console. So Microsoft doesn't scare us again. I think it's gotta be the lowest of PS1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. In Which, my opinion, this is the worst of the PlayStations. You're gonna get a big argument of like, no, the PlayStation 4 like sold so many, blah, blah. I don't think that was because the PS4 was so good. I think it's because of how bad the Xbox One, the was. Xbox yeah. One was. I've said this in a, in a few videos of like, during that time, Xbox One was so bad that, all right, well, a lot of people are going over to PlayStation and this is before cross-platform existed for online. And so, okay, well, if I want to play games with my friends, what do my friends have? Oh, well, they got a PlayStation because the Xbox sucked. And then it just exponentially got bigger and bigger and bigger. I would argue C. No, it's not that bad. Because that would be on the same le level as uh, PS4 Slim. It was less ambitious than the PS3. And we'll talk about PS5 in a second. Yeah. I, I feel pretty good about B on this one. 
PSP Go. So the PSP Go, if you're unfamiliar, was essentially the original PSP, but digital only with a cool little sliding form factor. This is back when like the sidekick was really popular. Yeah. Imagine, you know, when the uh, Xbox Series S came out and everyone was like, oh, digital only. Yeah, so it did that like 11 years beforehand. I want to put the PSP Go higher because I personally think it's cool. I and it was very it was much ahead of its time. Coolest thing ever. And it just like, it's kind of But it, yeah, the problem was it just wasn't great. Let's see. I think C feels good. C feels good. I for feel like people are going to get mad about putting in C, but last, okay. last, but certainly least. Okay. PlayStation 5. We need the PS5 yet? There was a lot of unknowns with the PlayStation when we first did this tier list. Three years ago, we put the PS5 in B tier. Now, that was before it had actually come out. I will say that it is aged quite well now that people can actually get their hands on it yes ps5 is a well-rounded package not only solid graphics it has good cpu good ssd speed yep. it feels like it is kind of what i had hoped that the ps4 would be which is just a well-rounded package whereas the ps4 felt like it was like you know the dude who like only works out one arm the rest of his body is all kind of like scrawny because like he only cared about graphics and didn't care about his like his hard drive and his like cpu and stuff it is a little bit expensive i will say 500 dollars just doesn't feel great especially because they've done so much weirdness with the price kind of increasing over time and stuff but that being said three years into the life cycle i would say the ps5 deserves a pretty solid eight tier also it feels like it's a good base for this generation for the next you know five years or however long until we get another console like i feel like it's aging well i said it i said it in a couple of videos i still say it right now if they're looking the market uh for playstation 5 right now this is the one they should get over the slim and uh that stands with me right now there you have our tier list uh Here's what everyone thinks. Hello and welcome to This Is. The PS5 Slim is out and it sometimes huh. has us scratching our heads on why this would thinking? be a variation of the PS5. So today we're going to be determining just how weird some of the strangest console variations of all time are. Matt, are yeah. you ready? Samsung Super Aladdin Boy. So this is what I'm assuming is a master system. As we all know, Samsung make everything. Samsung apparently released a whole line of Sega consoles throughout the 80s and 90s, specifically for the South Korean market. Apparently, this was because importing Japanese electronics was basically banned in South Korea at the time. I will say, though, the Samsung Mega Drive looks dope, mostly because it's just a straight Mega Drive just with, like, some extra lettering on it. I bet these things are very expensive. One of these came with every Samsung tank that they sold. God of War Ragnarok PS5. Wait, this is a real thing? This was a collab between Micromania and PlayStation France. The thing is, this looks like weirdly fuzzy. It does um, look kind of cool though. Yeah, I'm kind of I'm kind of about this one. Here's my problem with like sweepstakes. I don't win them. Need for Speed Oh my God, PS2. that's amazing. So this is made by Spirit oh Players for EA. It was a promo giveaway in Germany. So it came bundled with Need for Speed Most Wanted, controllers, remote, and keys for the car. The car like this car, not like a big car. And then you use the key to turn on the console. So good. Hood Bro. Outlaws and Legends Xbox One X. This is a one of one. It's essentially a treasure chest that not only has your Xbox One X in it, but also you can store the controller inside as well. Is the cooling up to spec? Is my Xbox One X gonna run a little hot? Who cares? Mm. It's a treasure chest. Mm, it's gonna be too warm, Matt. I need to make sure that it's properly cooled. I need some liquid cooling. Nerd. I like to think that I'm up to date with a lot of yeah. Xbox. Like I collect a lot of like custom Xbox stuff. I've never heard of this, and I feel like a gamer who just compromised. I will say, uh, it's a really cool treasure chest. I don't see the Xbox inside. It almost looks like they just dropped an Xbox inside. Yeah, and, then and just put a foam controller. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Foam yeah. Bit over it. This is a custom Nintendo 64 Buck Bumble. I, I actually, I'm gonna ding this one. Go ahead. So what's the problem with uh, where the text is? The reset button is on his crotch. Correct. Oh, good if Lord. You, you... Good Lord. I just see it. I see it. Kenzie, is that the reason why it's on here, perhaps? No. There's nothing remarkable about this game except for the soundtrack, which is one okay. of the greatest things ever. Okay. Okay. Let's see it. Let's see it. What about now? It's time to rock with the big and the bump. Bump to the bump to the bump to the bass. Bump to the bump to the bump. Bump to the bump to the bump to the bass. Bump to the bump to the bump. So this is the type of music that you're listening to while in the M3 PS2. Yeah, babe, I gotta reset my game. Can you hit my? Can you hit Buck Bumble in the crotch? Like, just, 
The Oreo <laughs> Series S. How? What? Hell yes, what? brother. Hell First yes. First of all, how do I not know about this? And two, how does Lamar Wilson not have this? He probably does. This is an Oreo and Xbox collab from 2021. It's one of three. This looks delicious. I will say that. And plus, look, it's actually functional. They actually cut out a hole yes. in the cookie for the fan hole, unlike some of these other consoles, which are clearly never meant to be used. And the controller's good, too. The control I actually am not mad by that controller. This ah, is I want quality. This. I want this. Can I just say something? I feel like, and maybe I'm biased, I don't know. Custom Xboxes are way better than custom Playstations over the last, like, 10 years. Like, there's so few good custom Playstations. The Minecraft Xbox One S, I still will vote as one of the coolest special edition consoles of all time. Tekken? What the Take hell? back what you just said about Playstation, <laughs> because this is amazing. Because he punched a hole right through the console. This thing's dope, though. Did, look, when you had a good round, you could just... Got this him. bump them. I think this one right now is in the running for the coolest. No. Oreo's way better than this. It's a clever idea, but it's just a little shell on the console. Like, it's actually not. Okay, Xbot. Oh, whoa. The Metal Gear Rising PS3 Slim, it lights up. That's actually pretty sick. There's some real effort that went into this. It's got cyborg armor, so if you suddenly stacked United States Senator tries to mess with you, you've got recourse. With a name like Armstrong, I, I assumed he'd be really weak-legged. Play college ball, you know. Presumably it's bulletproof. I don't think that's true. Oh my god. The Divers 2000 CX1 Dreamcast it had a full 14-inch TV. And a Dreamcast in honestly, one on Sonic's head. 14 inches for something like this for a TV was actually pretty... 14 that's inches? That's like <sighs> bigger than a 13. The price was justified because not only did it have this sick teal transparent controller, so cool. which is worth the price of admission right there, but it came with the Dream Eye camera, Dreamcast keyboard, the remote. So they made about 5,000 of these, which is actually a lot more which than is, most of these consoles. Yeah, 4,997 4, more than most of these have been. Someone's selling it on RetroPixel right now for $15,000. That's a steal. We should get one. Give me your credit card. Uh-uh. Just give me your credit card. Uh-uh. Give me. No. All right, fine. What the hell? How did I ever see this? The Lynx Awakening Switch. So this is from 2019, and it is essentially, I would say, more of a custom dock than a Switch, because the Switch looks like it's fairly standard on the inside. Of course, Nintendo is going to be the one to do this. They don't give you a custom console. No, they give you a custom dock. And then they say, you know this portable console that you love to walk around with? Well, screw you. Because the best-selling feature of this is that if you leave the, the, the Switch docked in there for a full 30 days straight, the egg will hatch. What? And give you a custom special amiibo. I don't think that's true. I think you're making that up. A rare amiibo. What? what no, it doesn't. That, that does not work like that. Name one person who can dispute that. Can you and describe then, the, the amiibo to me? What's the amiibo that comes out? It's the Windwalker. The Windwalker? I want someone to like, in the comments, just be like, yeah, no, I did it. Well, you are gaslight of rest of us. Might as well do the audience too. The 1886 PS4. Oh, God. So this is an 80s console. And by 80s, I mean the 1880s. Because it's steampunk as shit, son. With this controller, it actually will not respond to you unless mm -hmm. you are wearing welding goggles and a top hat. Ooh. Who doesn't want their console to also wear pants? <laughs> this controller is not wearing pants. It's wearing ass <laughs> caps. Christ. Moving on. Whoa, this, this is cool. Se this is dope. The Sega Terra Drive. So this was an IBM PC system. So an actual computer with an integrated Mega Drive, aka Genesis. And look at that keyboard. Doesn't that keyboard look delightful? It really does. You know what? Uh, too bad they didn't have a terabyte of storage in it. Oh, Hitman that's cool. PS4. That's cool. Given away by Square Enix US. It's a briefcase from Hitman. So essentially, they just built a PS4 into a briefcase, which I think is thematically actually quite good. Well, imagine walking into the room. You bust out your PS4. People think you're about to give, you know, a PowerPoint presentation. You're about to print out your slides and you explain to the board your KPIs, key metrics for the forecasts of the next fiscal year. And then instead, instead of doing any of that, you hit. You just them. <laughs> added bonuses. No one knows in the boardroom that you're a professional gamer man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just I mean, to be fair, you need to bring a display and uh, power and whatnot. This is good. I appreciate this one. I just wish it would open up and you could pull out 
your shooty bang bang stuff. What, what, what are we looking at here? The Surge Xbox One X. So this was also done by Focus Home Interactive for sweepstakes for the Surge 2, another game that I've never heard of in my life. I'm not entirely sure what I'm looking at if I'm being honest with you. This is definitely, the, I would say, the most artistic one we've looked at. But imagine waking up and seeing your Xbox centipede creature just scurrying across the floor. You know what I will say though? Looking at it a little bit closer, I think it's quite literally just this thing slapped on the slapped top. Slapped on top, Because yeah. you can kind of see, look, on the left side, you can see where this side is. Yeah. It's just a regular black Xbox with a sticker on the front. This is neat. I'm not going to put it that high, though. It, it's cool, it's, but it doesn't. It's just, it's much like the fist through the PS3, where it's an add-on for a console, not like a full shell replacement or something that's a little bit more But unique. this is the, so far, I think this is the one that's the most, like, striking if you just, like, see it in, like, it's your cool. collection. Oh! <gasps> Oh my God. The Thor Love and Thunder Series X, which is literally the Xbox Series X as Mjolnir. I have two things. Go ahead. With this. Go ahead. One, that's not how it was cracked. It's cracked into more pieces. Mille, Mjolnir? Jonathan? The problem is some dude went to go, like he won this and went to go pick it up, but he was not deemed worthy to wield it. So it was just still, it's still in the factory. Now I have a bad habit of, with the Wii, of sent, like I have a history of sending Wii remotes. Oh my into, God, do not TV throw streams. this. I don't imagine, think- Imagine, imagine uh, me with the Xbox. I don't think that handle will actually physically support the weight of that Xbox. If you say Phil Spencer three times fast, you have the power. You just pick it up and just Phil Spencer crush Sony is with it. Odin confirmed. Let us know what you thought was the best console. Let us know in the comments what you like. Are you going to hit Buck Bumble in the crotch to reset them? And we'll catch you in the next one. Don't hit people in the crotch to reset them. That's That resets them in a different way. I would say it works every time. I promise you if you hit someone in the crotch, they will reset.